have a dedic any social media presence, um, and and we don't have any formal platforms that we're communicating with the public. So we need we need strategy as well. So this position is meant to address both of those needs. Um, any, any questions regarding the the need of the position? All right, I'll keep talking then, right? Um, so I have two uh, position upgrades in this budget. Um, one is a children and family initial assessment supervisor. The current person is um, a lead that we need to shift some more responsibility to. In order to do that fairly, we need to promote her to a supervisor. Um, and so that is one of the, the upgrades that we've asked about. Um, the other upgrade is the behavioral health supervisor. The outpatient or the behavioral health program did have an outpatient supervisor. Uh, it's been vacant now for two years and we've really spent the last year and a half um, assessing where the true needs of the behavioral health division. And so there is a supervisory component to it. Um, so we took an open therapist position and upgraded it to a therapist to be able to meet those needs. Um, a large portion of this position is going to be able to, or a portion of this um, position will be bringing in revenue through uh, part of their job duties, which I think is important to note. That, that was one of the two positions you're asking for, right, Liza? Well, yeah, the behavioral health supervisor. That was yeah, one of the okay. upgrades. So was re that's an upgrade or a new position? I, I see it as a new position. Well, I think you listed it as a new position, but it's technically a therapist position that we are asking for it to be converted into a supervisor position. Well, maybe that's, I think it was this position that we converted it to a therapist position. Now we're converting it back. Yeah, something that like that. <laughs> That sounds about right. So you're talking about the children and family leads worker upgrade for 5900 and then there's a database coordinator and an economic support supervisor upgrade? Those were two that I asked. The database administrator, system administrator, the office services manager, and economic support advisor, I asked to be to be assessed for grading. But at this point, we are told that it was going to be on hold until the, um, the assessment is completed next year. Yeah. So those three is what I was told. So those two will not be getting that I mean, and Chris can speak to that, but that's yeah. what that's what I was told that those upgrades were we three, in our, three, re three requests for position upgrades for you. <clears throat> that sounds right. Yeah. I do have three. But so, you're being told that some of those are on on hold we'll until we do the salary okay. study. All right. All right, so we'll have to. We'll have to look at that. Okay. And they're, they're vacant now? No, there's someone there's in them. Yeah. They, won't be they won't be considered for reassessment until after the salary study, unless, is what I was told. Unless, yeah, unless we decide to do something different. Yeah. Okay. Those are pretty key positions, right? To keep somebody in those. Oh, correct. Mm -hmm. Um. But one of the new expansion requests was an economic support lead. This is an additional position we are requesting because the need, we're, we have a new manager uh, as of February, and we spent some time really assessing the workflow and what needs to happen within that division. And so we really need someone to help with processing and supporting staff on the call center in addition to taking on um, a lead in the in the training component of the position. So those are some of the, the main um, pieces as well as um, addressing some of the backlog of overpayments. 
that we have as well that keeps being put on the back burner and you keep putting it off. You only have a window to be able to submit to claim those dollars or to try and get that back. And it's just with the workflow, it's, it keeps getting put back, like shuffled, and we can't keep doing that. So, can I ask, so the economic uh, court lease, it's like it's revenue neutral. It's 82,000, 82,500 revenue. So that, how does that happen? Well, because, that's a good question. Because a portion of this position, the majority of it, we can claim, bring down dollars from with the state based on um, the salaries. And then the other portion we are anticipating being able to um, to receive from getting a piece of the back payments. So once we realize someone was overpaid and we submit that you need, you're supposed to be paying back the state this much money, the counties get a percentage of what you pay back. So we're, we're attaching a little bit of revenue to that as well. So the two vacant positions are the ones that you want. Those are fully funded though by Income ones are you uh, look at economic support. Some of these positions do generate revenue. Oh, sure. Yeah. And that's all. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, the ones that you have uh, person in place that you can legally allocate funds to, those positions work with someone? Or are they? No, the database administrator, there's there's no revenue attached to that. Um, the office service manager, I don't believe there's any revenue attached to that either. That one, we we are able to use um, our state contracted dollars toward the cost of her position. And actually last year, with the first year and a number of years, the state finally boosted our our baseline amount for children and family services. So with that increase, we're able to pay for the upgrade of the supervisor. Significance of the yellow boxes. I don't know. I don't know. I can't see it. That's why I didn't make that. What is this chart? Organization. Sure, but I don't know what the I yellow think those are. The ones that those are the upgrade ones. Okay. okay. That's why I'm asking about. All right. Oh, either vacant or oh. Okay, I see. All right. So I guess I wanted to understand question. the ones that we have somebody in place, but their position can't be upgraded as the children, family, supervisor. No, the two or the three that um, we have someone in place, but the position will not be assessed until the salary study is completed. Um, is the the database um, okay? The database person okay. is. I think on there it might be a different name because we were changing the so title. Database system. Okay, then they they changed okay. it. Okay, and then the office services manager. There's someone in place, but um, and the economic support supervisor. There's currently someone in place, but with realigning and assessing some of their duties. We didn't know if that. But you meant. would like to see them. Up I, I would like to see it reassessed. I yes. do. I would. I would <laughs> and those were all of the position recommendations that I had that were different from the previous. Year. You still have a person that that shared a couple years ago. Yes, we have two shared positions now in the sheriff's office. One is actually in the jail um, and acts as the social worker, if you will, at the jail. And the second one is the community liaison position. And that, um, that individual just finished their training um, to be a deputy. And then we'll start working with the DA and the courts on referring people that have fall within certain categories of charges to be able to be under supervision and make sure that they stay connected and hooked up in the community. 
um, and providing that support. And hopefully they're not, our goal is to try and reduce that recidivism back into the correctional system. So yes, we start. Is that working well? It's brand new and they just finished the training. So I can't speak to it because we haven't started assigning cases yet. We're at that point now. So last next year, next year we'll I'll have a better sense. Oh, yeah. oh for sure. Mm -hmm. So can I just ask for so for budget purposes, like the the re expansion requests that are listed here and the net for those. So it says some are going to be um, looked at until the salary, until the salary study is done. So we would need to budget those, put those in the budget for that. I don't think we're just some of them. Any of these, any of these positions could be seen in the budget under the current tax levy for the human services department. Is that? Yes. Yeah. They could what? They could be in the budget. The, the money's in the budget. Then I'll put it that way. From what I correct from what Chad has told me in conversations with Brad. And a lot of that I think has to do with the fact there's so much revenue that does offset. Right. So if you put it in the budget because they're going to generate enough revenue to pay for those positions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Was the children and family initial assessment supervisor? I don't know what the grade is that came in on that. Could someone able to tell me? Uh, which one? 110. The children and family initial assessment or IA supervisor? 110. Upgrade? Yes. Was well, that what you want upgrade? <laughs> I, 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 I was yeah. not. It is a 110. Okay. Any other questions for mine? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hero. Or seven. Take some food on. Yeah, money. It's a good salad. The Greek salad is good. Very good. Public health. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. I don't really have any extension requests in my budget for this next year, um, but I think it's worthwhile to um, maybe explain why and how things are going in public health because we had some changes in 2021 um, with our management staff, and that's going to be something that we're going to continue to assess, and it may affect our other positions for the future. Um, so if you remember from last year, we asked to change our management structure for 2021 um, and we changed a nursing supervisor position to two separate positions. One is a strat health strategy director who oversees our strategy staff. Um, that was a big gap in our staffing in the past because they all directly reported to the health officer. Um, so we've been working really hard on fixing the structure there with our strategy team this year. So far, it's really, really going well, having them get, have their own direct supervisor. Um, and then the other one that was created is a communicable or a community health director, which used to be just a nursing supervisor, um, but now oversees our nursing staff and a social worker, which was also added this year. Um, because we also added the social worker and have some new managers in place, um, I'm working with the new managers to assess what their needs are this year, in addition to obviously our pandemic response, which has taken up a lot of our time. Um, in 2020 and 2021. So not to say that we don't have any expansion needs for 2022, but it's a little bit difficult to project what they're going to be. And we have a lot of COVID funding that can help us offset those requests. So um, we have a couple of positions that were created for our 2021 budget um, that were given to us with the understanding that they would be grant funded with our COVID funding to strategy positions. Um, those I'd like to continue keeping in our budget into the future. So they are kind of built in there and being offset by COVID funding for 2022. Um, but there aren't any new ones added in there. I may at some point request to add more um, strategists or data specialists in to help us with our COVID response, depending on 
what um, what comes in the future, but we have quite a lot of COVID funding to offset that. So that's, um, I don't know if Chad has explained it, but it's sort of in the budget, sort of not the budget for next year. Well, so. what is that? How much was it? Quite a lot. Where is it? Is in the budget or what? We were, yeah, for contact tracing and strategy team, um, any COVID response so far, we were given up to $2.5 million to give us get us through October of 2022. And I've been told that we're possibly going to be given more um, to work on our pandemic recovery plan, which may allow us to um, expand on our strategy team and social work and um, potentially at some point we may request to add another position for a communications position. Right now our strategy team is covering all of that. Um, but right now I think we're in a good place as a department. Um, working within our current levy amount, I didn't see a need to ask for any expansions this year because of the extra COVID funding that we've been given from the federal government. How much do we spend on COVID tracing or contact tracing? Uh, I don't know from the beginning of the pandemic. Well, like monthly now, what are we doing at this current point? Are we still? Last time I looked, um, probably a few weeks ago, we were at about $800,000 for COVID salaries this year okay. that we That's spent. Really Year. For the year. Yeah. Just for contact tracing? Mostly contact tracing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in the budget for 2022, I think it's about 190. Yeah. We don't really know what the contact tracing is going to look like for next year. Right. Um, you wonder if the results would have been any different if we didn't have it. It's very hard to say. Yeah. I do wonder that as well. <laughs> Well, you know, hopefully, yeah, we, we could put a lot of money in our pocket if we didn't do it. also have a couple of vacant positions that we're working on. Um, we're taking our time with filling them because that's part of uh, reassessing our needs as a department. We don't know necessarily know if, if our staffing post-pandemic is going to look exactly the same as pre-pandemic, but um, I don't see a need to fill vacant positions if we don't have an immediate need to fill them. So some of your positions are dependent on grant funding? Yes, quite a few of them quite a few. are grant funding. Any other questions? Good job. Thank you. I know um, we've handled the SADA. Unless you have some questions on the veteran services budget, I thought we would give them a pass today from yourselves. <laughs> Uh, but I think we're, you know, to certainly get him to join us. But if not, that should wrap up the human service. Yeah, if there's any questions, have them. It's on page 81, Nurse Department, Veterans Services. Again, this was a, he had recommended a 30 hour position yeah. for his program assistance. The county board increased that to full time benefits. This, the tax levy increases as a result of that change that happened at the board level. I think we can give them a pass. We know what else we already have. So. Yeah, and having that full time position is really helpful a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You guys just pick an Andy then. Any, 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 any,
Um, yeah, this, I guess I would yeah, start off yeah. by pretty, again, good budgets here. Health courses are off the levy as we discussed. Um, there are a couple of assumptions that, uh, expansions that we've already made that we'll have to fund. One one was, you know, we, we the chairman and I met with Andrew um, about a month ago. He was having some real problems filling the Wabadonia caretaker position um, and actually staffing the campground. That was a part-time position, I think, at 24 hours a week. Um, recommendation that we move that to a full-time position to uh, fill the position and make sure we just have people there when campers are showing up uh, on the clock. You know, it was, it's sort of a, it's a unique position because campers can kind of show up at any time and we're asking a person to kind of monitor their hours and work 24 hours a, a week and and there's proven to be more work and more effort into that. So an effort to get some stability out there. That was the recommendation. So I think the number, she had is the number on that, about 25. For what? For Wabadonia. Uh, okay. We go from part-time to full-time. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. I'm about 25. Other than that, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Jason. I, that, that was uh, one of the main things I was going to just mention. It was, no, no, I'm glad you did. It wasn't, wasn't a formal formal uh, expansion request because it was just not anticipated. Uh, just real quickly on that background. Um, yeah, we've been having, you know, I won't belabor it, but we've been having some issues just with the caretaker positions in general and particularly Wabadonia. There's a lot of responsibilities, not only with camping in Wabadonia, but also HHPers. So we did we did fill it. We had a part time person. They they left shortly thereafter, um, and uh, so we do have an offer out for a full time uh, position. Uh, good candidate, uh, somebody that we had interviewed um, earlier, and um, so I don't have an answer on that yet. But hopefully we'll we'll be hearing soon. Yeah, it includes housing. It does include housing. One thing I just want to mention about that is our current meek one our caretaker is extremely talented with housing and remodeling. And we uh, essentially gutted the whole interior of the Wildonia Park caretaker house and redid it. It's got brand new flooring, lighting, uh, a brand new bathroom, totally redone. Um, I'm sorry, Wildonia. Totally redone. I'm glad to show you photos. I have my phone, but um, really, really did an excellent job. We did it all in house, probably saved the county thousands of dollars doing it in-house. Uh, basic was the cost of supplies, which I was able to manage in this year's budget, um, even though I you know, didn't anticipate doing that work on the house. So um, that was a great thing, but it's also, you know, as we try and market this for somebody to come in, nice to have that house safe and cleaned up and, and ready to go. So um, we're just doing some final touches on that, but it, it should be ready to go shortly. Um, uh, just on, personnel uh, things as well. I uh, just learned um, a couple, two weeks ago, one week ago, uh, that my longtime administrative manager is retiring in November. Um, so Cindy, for those of you that know her, uh, is retiring. She's been with uh, us a long time and really knows um, uh, the parks in and out and golf course operations too. Um, so we'll be looking to, uh, to, re to replace her. Um, it'll obviously be a big loss. She's been a huge support for the department. Um, but we, I, I had talked with Jason earlier already, but we have some thoughts on how we can uh, address that and hopefully um, keep, keep everything rolling. So, um, yeah, no, no other specific. Obviously, uh, you've heard from me a couple of times, so I won't be later, but we have a I'm very thankful to all the capital uh, funding that has been um, prior approved, both both bonding and through the county. Um, so we're very busy on doing those capital projects. We're trying to keep on schedule. Uh, you heard from, from Jason this morning, but the county the cover bridge project, I think is going really well. So I think the building is going to look beautiful when it's done. Um, so, and we're, we are, we were under budget significantly on the cover bridge. And, um, so just, uh, and again, I had mentioned this earlier, Jason, but 
we're hoping because we do have additional expenses, and I think he mentioned it this morning on the board, but we, do, we, we are anticipating additional expenses at Lions End because uh, Cover Bridge we had a well in, um, and so we had some of the infrastructure there. We have electricity right at the site. Whereas Lions Den, we have to run brand new electricity from the energies we have to run. Um, we'll have a new septic and we don't have a well. So, you know, they were budgeted the same, but my hope is that we can take savings and roll it over at Lions Den as needed. I mean, I'm certainly not um, gonna do that if we don't need it once we go to bid. So but um yeah, other than that, we're we're very busy with all the capital projects. Um Hawthorne Hills, the ADA work at the golf course and GHH Peters. Um, parking improvements and boardwalk at Lions Den. Uh, just quickly mention, I mentioned it to NRC the other day, but um, we're changing the alignment of the boardwalk at Lions Den a little bit to a better location. And we've been partnering with US Fish and Wildlife because it's, it's always been partly on their property. Um, and they've been it, they've been just really great. Uh, and so we, we worked with them to change the alignment. They're totally supportive and they said, uh, hopefully in 22, in 2022, they'll have some um, funding for us to, to to work on that project together. So, as you know, there was some county capital put aside. We just received a DNR stewardship grant, and those two were matching each other. Uh, I wasn't expecting, but Fish and Wildlife, it, it, I don't have a dollar figure, but they are willing and, and very excited about that project and willing to contribute. So, hopefully that. Um, basically get on more stable ground. So we were, um, part of the reason, I mean, it held up a long time, but part of the reason that we're replacing it is that it, you know, the piers sunk and stuff because it's on really wet soils. Uh, so we're going to put it, it's going to be a similar situation, but we're going to put it to the north. It'll be a, a longer trail on the fish wildlife that will be on kind of on wetland soils. We'll still have a floating pier part. So two purposes. One was, uh, the soils issue. The other is that we're going to be able to get further out into the wetlands, so it's a better view. And it'll all be ADA. Um, the pier, as originally proposed and currently proposed, is still going to be floating, so we don't have the issues with the pier. Um, so it'll, it'll. Um, I think it'll be a really nice addition. So, um, I can mention a few things if you want. Uh, or your question. One quick question. I get the new lawnmower cap. Oh, thank you. I, I forgot to bring that up. So we we did we have not yet. Um, the so we did not have it in the budget. We have two mowers, two uh, large tractors and mowers for doing most of our rough mowing work. Um, I hadn't anticipated replacing them, although they're probably on the order of five to seven years old. Um, they still have hours on the tractors, but. Uh, we had our one of our main uh, seasonal workers who does the mowing request for a cab, uh, you know, fully cabbed for for a number of reasons. Uh, one, they're out there mowing invasives that you know have you know toxins that are like that. Uh, air conditioning in the summer, heat in the winter. He actually commutes with that tractor from like Hawthorne Hills to Tendic and Cover Bridge and so on and so forth. Um, so we had originally proposed to retrofit one of our existing tractors with cab and all of that, um, all that equipment in the capital budget. That's what we proposed. What we what we subsequently found out is that our tractor apparently is the single tractor that does can't accept a, a cab uh, a cab attachment, and so that's unfortunate. So then I approached uh, Chairman and Jason too about possibly trading one of those tractors in and getting one with a cab. The delta on that is a little bit more than I can bear in this year's budget, given what I'm expected, or uh, what we're expecting with the capital projects and a little bit of uncertainty at Lions Den and stuff. But um, so the delta on that is about 26,000. So um, I'm hoping we can address that in the capital, uh, you know, as part of that cab request. But we haven't purchased it yet. But we did get we did get estimates uh, that tractor that we have now is a Kubota. It, we'd be replacing with a slightly larger Kubota, and uh, it would come with a cab and air and everything. We use that tractor a lot, um, and um, we have two just as a backup. We, do, we by the way, we just be trading one tractor, getting one with a cab. The other one would just be used primarily for backup and, and smaller duty stuff like we have at Yep, that was where we were. 
Um, well, uh, I mean, so we, 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 it has a sunscreen, but there is no air heat and there's no way to convert it to air heat. So, you know, he can be out there in a 90 degree day uh, mowing and, and literally mowing for eight hours. Um, so it, it's a little unbearable. I, he also does mow late into the season. So in the fall where he's driving that on the road, um, without any heat. Um, and then more importantly for me, it's really a safety issue. And it's the reason why highway went to all capped stuff when they mow on the freeways and stuff, there is, um, a lot of plant species now, like uh, wild parsnip and even poison ivy and stuff that can get airborne aerosol. And, you know, you can get exposure to that, especially when you're, when you're mowing and chopping it up. So, um, you know, that, that is a little bit of a safety concern for me and the cab. Uh, doesn't eliminate it, but it definitely reduces that exposure. In that umbrella or whatever he has over them, if it's raining out, they're right. still getting salt. Oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's a little better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sunscreen, it's what it is. Six years. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's been really dead. And was, was, was the barn that was going to become a you know, vineyard or a winery? Was that it? No. Oh, for for clay bluffs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that that was the original. I, I know there was a little. And, and did the sale go actually go through? Yeah, there was a little confusion about this this morning. So at some point, you know, we separated off from the developer because they weren't able to do their share of the negotiation. So uh, this was this was a couple of years ago now already, but uh, the land trust negotiated a separate option to purchase of just the land or the park. The development, you know, while we're encouraging it is independent. So what happened is uh, what I described this morning is that 69 acres to the north is independent was sold by Waukesha State Bank to a private landowner. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but they didn't sell it. So we're not involved in the development. We're also not involved in the wineries, but I understand that that's you know, still on the table for the city of Port, ideally. Well, I, I thought I read that that sale had already gone through. It did, for the 69 acres to the north, it, it sold. And it did not sell to the We're just talking about the barn. Oh, ten, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Tenic Barn. Yeah. yeah, that was that was packaged with the developer who was going to do that, and so that never occurred. But I thought he had bought it. He had not. He, he had not purchased it. We had an agreement. Uh, there's some question. I haven't run it by court counsel. There's we had an executed agreement. There's some there's some question. I mean, we potentially could enforce it, but yeah, he he bailed out of his project and purchased the barn. So tending barn, tending barn is still standing, and we we frankly we frankly do use it quite a bit for storage. So like our donation benches and uh, spare mowers and and our snowmobiles and stuff do get stored in there. So they're they're still stored. It's um it's kind of like the sunscreen on the tractor. It's yeah. it's better than nothing. Right. It's like an umbrella. <laughs> it's like an umbrella. Well, well. Very well aired. Don't park the winners of weeks. All right. <laughs> the expansion request for additional funding for clean farm families. Twenty five. That'd be Andy. That'd be Andy. That'd be Andy. Sorry. Any other questions for Andrew? Good job well, on all your grant okay. uh, requests. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yep. Have a great day. Yep. Andy. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You want me to start off with a little overview? Or? Sure. Whatever you want. You're on deck. Well, I, I would just want to say that in the water quality world, there's a lot going on. Uh, in this part of the state and in Ozaki County, a lot of our water bodies are considered impaired. For example, the Milwaukee Rivers and impaired water. And throughout the last couple of years, a TMDL was uh, 
adopted for the Milwaukee. A TMDL is a total maximum daily load. It's actually, what, what happened is they actually, through modeling, determined, determined how much pollutant needs to be reduced to make that water body fishable, swimmable, that sort of thing. So the EPA is involved in, in this and certain standards have been set for different reach sheds of the Milwaukee River watershed. So what I'm getting at, there's a lot of opportunities now for us as a department to be a little more uh, involved with improving the Milwaukee River watershed. Regarding the Sheboygan River Basin, that would be Sauk Creek, Sucker Brook, the Onion uh, tributary here in the county. The state is in the process now of developing a TMDL for that Sheboygan River Basin area. So there's going to be more work and more effort to uh, reduce that pollutant load too. And the major concerns regarding those water bodies are total suspended solids, which is you know soil eroding into the water bodies and phosphorus. And you know as we as a department we deal with the agricultural lands, so that's where uh, we're mostly involved with trying to improve the water bodies. Two plans were recently approved. Uh, one is the Fredonia Newburgh Area Watershed Based Plan. That's a nine key element plan. Once, and the other one is a Cedar Pigeon Yulio Mo Creek plan. And these plans identify areas where you can get the biggest bang for the buck, where the pollutant sources are. So now that we have these plans done, we can apply for federal monies, EPA funds. We're eligible now to compete for those funds. So we're hoping in the future we can do that as well and get a little more uh, money into our area to, to help assist with that. And as you know, throughout the state too, there's a lot of water concerns, groundwater concerns in the southwest part of the state with um, high nitrates and so on. And as a result, uh, through the Department of Ag, they've increased monies for county staff. For example, Zaki County for next year, we're getting roughly about $32,000 of additional funding to support staff. And, I, and that's part of the reason why you'll, you'll notice in our expansion request, we have a request for a new position. It's a soil uh, conservation planner, soil health type specialist. We're getting $32,000 from DATCAP and then we're getting $20,000 through the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, which is another new program that's in our area. It's roughly a $18 million project. Um, NRCS is contributing 7.6 million. MMSD is contributing, I forget exactly, 7 million or so. It's a, it's a lot of money. And we're a partner in this project to focus in on the Milwaukee River to uh, purchase development rights on agricultural properties to do more with soil health, that sort of thing. A lot of opportunities for us. And then I, I just wanted to also mention we deal with sanitation and zoning and on the sanitation and zoning side, I'll focus in first on sanitation. We issue all of the septic permits throughout the county, even in the Mequon area. And that's increased roughly by about 30% over two years ago. And at the time I prepared the budget, we were another 30% over last year. Now it seems to have leveled off a little bit, so I'm not sure if we're gonna really be truly above 30% over last year or not, but compared to two years ago, we're, we're over 30%. And you'll notice we also did some office reorganization as a recommendation. I guess I should see if there's any questions. <laughs> Carried away here, I'm sorry. Can I ask you, so you said a new, new position conservation planner? Yes. You say there's 35,000, Set outside for that or something? There's $32,000 from the Department of Ag, and then we have this $20,000 from uh, through the Regional Conservation Partnership Program. So there's what, $50,000, $53,000. So would the, the addition, like, would the net fee of this new position be $68,136, or would it be less than that? Because it's those less than that. Uh, so what, what happened there is you know, when we talked to Andy, it seemed like you're going to get the revenues regardless of whether 
uh, new positions were added. So we oh, did actually go ahead and add. So that's already in, and this yeah, would that's be in. And that's, that's the primary reason why his tax levy right now decreases by as much as it does. Otherwise, it'd probably be up. Yeah. You know, regular we have a increase in yeah. 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 okay. the well, that actually got moved to the public oh. health department. Oh, did okay. Yeah, in the end, it seems like it was more of a public health issue. I think it would be nice if something were, were done because we do have a lot of hot spots in the county. I think maybe 10, pretty close to 10 years ago, you started with the buffer strips. Right. Is that right? Is that now when those contracts come due, which is going to be soon, probably within a year or two? Yeah, they are coming due. Uh, are they going to be reevaluated, looked at, same more money? What are, you know, how actually, how that, uh, actually, we have another. Uh, what a buffer strip? What, what does that mean exactly? A buffer strip is like if a farmer has his land and it's uh, abutting a creek. You know, so a buffer strip is you don't plant your normal row crops there. You can seed it with grass, alfalfa, or whatever. So it stops the erosion from right alongside the creek, right into it. And keeps fertilizer off too, but it. Some degree, yeah. yeah. Some degree, yeah. Yeah, we actually, it's kind of interesting. About two years ago, a new program, a new, I'm going to say pot of money was issued to, to us if we would apply for it. There's a program, it's called the Multi-Discharge Variance Program. Uh, municipalities, for example, uh, Village of Fredonia, they have a wastewater treatment system. They have to have a certain discharge level for their permit. For every pound of phosphorus that they're above their permit limit, they give the county, our department, $50 per pound over. So we've been receiving like sixteen to $18,000 a year of additional funds through that program. We take that money, we had to do a, a water a plan, and our plan was to have harvestable buffers along these rivers and streams. So we're taking that money now and we'll and we are able to, in certain watersheds, reinstate those contracts. I think it's a 10, it's a, like a 10 year that program, was, right? And that would, whatever it is per year yeah. times 10, you get your, that's your first check, that's your only check, right? Right, yeah. But I mean, it's quite an incentive, you know, because a lot of that floods on anyway. Right. right. Well, I work closely with the city of Port with their sludge. Okay. And the director on there told me I talked to him not too long ago. He says this is an incredible difference from when he first started here years ago, what it is now, from the difference of when there's a heavy rain, there's less discoloration in Lake Michigan because there isn't so much erosion. Incredible difference, visible difference. Oh, I can see that too. And I'm sure you see it looking over the top as well. Yep. No, these things do work. <laughs> yeah, and it's everything. The more cover crops, the more no-till. Yeah. It would be common sense things. to have a buffer, not have not farm right up to the water. Well, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it work that way. <laughs> See, uh, <laughs> the older, let's just say the older generation, yeah. and some of the younger generation, not many. No. They would enjoy farming right up to their steps of their house if they could. And every inch they have to try it. So it actually was quite a challenge to get these people to sign on to buffer strips. And right. This so, new program, too, the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, that program now allows for harvestable buffers, too, and turn strips. So this is the way it went. Mm -hmm. Well, you just don't plant corn there. Basically. Well, these buffer strips are maybe like a ditch in the middle of the uh, field. You know, you see a lot of people it used to be the area that you cropped up into the center of a field that had a runoff ditch. They were very thin, you know, maybe four or five feet across. 
now sometimes they see them, they're 20, 30 feet across or in the yeah. water wind. Yeah. Also, see the water wind. But that's not, a, that's not the same thing, right? No, a lot, a lot of times it's more where you have more of a permanent water, long, more long term water flow. You know. Is there any programs for creating water wind and fixing the road and fuel? Oh, yes. Yep. We have a lot of funds for so the water wings. Typically, historically, it was 75% cost sharing. If you were, you know, because people, we got con on our farm, we got conservation awards hanging on the wall because we always had waterways because we have rolling hills in yeah. yeah. You have nice waterways. There's some people that don't, and they just continue to work right straight through it, and there's, mm -hmm. it just continues to roll, and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And they, I, I don't know why, but I can't answer for other people that do that. But no. hard for people who would think conservatively, conservation wise, to see that. Conservative conservation assembly. Any of the additional funding for clean farm families, what is that? Well, that's money that right now we get monies from the Wisconsin Department of Ag. We're getting some new money now from a, another grant. We're working with a researcher and he applied for some federal grant. Anyhow, this money is all you would be utilized to support conservation incentive payments for the clean farm families for promotion of educational workshops, field days, demonstration plots. I would hope to get some additional funds and go to the Clean Farm Families group and have them determine how they would best want to utilize the funds. It's, I want it to be their group. And I think it would really show them that the county is supportive of all their, well, you have already shown that with the tractor. But I, but I think the more we can support that group, it's a very well-respected group throughout the state. They're doing a lot of good work and this money would be, you know, something that would further support their work, basically. Not the actual family that's clean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. Right. <laughs> Andy, we talked about this at the end of the meeting about the uh, Cedar Crisp group. Yes, that's a good point. How do we put this down uh, deeper? Because I know you were talking about how they're not very involved in same areas that the clean farm families are. And how do we do that? How do we incentivize? Because I think this is a good way to go. And it's really much more than just an estimate or waterway, estimate or ally, you know, and, and all that. So I think if we can, you know, how do we incentivize? Yeah, you know, I, I know a lot of the farmers within that group. And I think some of them are just starting to maybe get burned out a little bit. And Washington County staff serve as their collaborator for them. You know, my thought would be, if you do approve of funding, you know, take that $25,000 of the Clean Farm families, maybe you take some of that and provide some of that to the Cedar Creek Farmer Group. I mean, we have farmers that are in the Cedar Creek area here in the county that I hear from that, you know, we can't, they can't get any incentive funds now, like the Milwaukee River Green Farm families. I think, I think Jason, you received a letter yeah, from Dave. Dave yeah, Dave now is a board member. Of that. I think they were looking for a thousand dollars, right? Is it a thousand? Yeah. So I guess I, 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 I'm not looking to take any money. There's just a spectacular job. I guess my thought would be, can we somehow get some money to, or given the opportunity to get some money to continue this on the other side of the um, I guess it's something we got to talk about. Can I you know, they need to be a little more proactive and yeah, just yeah. chase the money. Yeah. I mean, the Department of Ag has this new program. The money's there. You have to apply for it. And they didn't apply for it last year, but I know they're applying it for 2022. So. I think their approach is more educational, right, versus actual demonstration, like 
Yeah, they've, they've been doing a lot to provide education about farming to the uh, folks who live in the urban areas. Yeah. Keep in mind all of the farmers in the Cedar Creek group, we invite them to all of our field days, all of our educational workshops. We actually have uh, Gabe Brown coming in February 9th of next year. Gabe Brown is kind of a pioneer soil health farmer from North Dakota. He's a really good presenter. He talks about profitability and how he went through a tough time, but how, how now that he follows the soil health principles, he's, he's doing really well. Really a good, good speaker. Field, well, field day coming up too. Yeah, next week, uh, Wednesday. And our Clean Farm Families Group, they're giving a similar presentation that they provided you, to, you know, at the board meeting to the um, Ozaki Treasures Network group too. It's all good. It's all good stuff. It's fun to work with those guys too. Any other questions for Andy? Oh, what's up? Thanks, Andy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Expansion. Later. Okay. Expansion portion of the budgets it comes later, right? Yeah. yeah. But we yeah they'll decide that. Okay. You you talked about it later, so. Right. Did you want to say anything else? Was there expansion? Only if you have questions, but I, I guess I well, should be coming back later when you get to that point, right? Yeah, okay. you if there's any questions, we can call you back. Okay. okay. Yeah, just I'll send you an email. If we okay. Them. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good question. I will, will send it here. I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> Get my All right. I talked about the expansion, correct? The whole budget. Yeah, their their budget pretty straightforward. They have, they have two expansion requests. Which one? Extension officers are going to additional charges at 115. Yes. Not correct. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll talk about the two expansion uh, proposals that we put in. I'll start with the regional A uh, uh, staffing strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, the state, this is uh, something that's heavy in the state. Um, they've done a lot of research and they met with farmers and met and, and to really uh, find out the needs um, in that county. And what they're looking at is really some highly specialized educators instead of generalists. In our county, here in Ozaki County, we have Steph Plaster. She's the farm management educa uh, agricultural educator. Her area is to help farms uh, that may be struggling, maybe have to develop a business plan. If they are in financial crisis, she works with that as well as some other farm management pieces. She is shared with Washington County, so she's 50-50. What this regional ag uh, staffing strategy would uh, entail is that we would have two other educators that will be part of Ozaki, but it would be the whole area. I'm the area extension director for four counties, Sheboygan, Ozaki, Washington, and Bonnellette County. So the three educators, one is Mike Baldwig, he is the crops and soils educator in uh, Sheboygan County, and then Tina Coleman, who's the dairy educator in Fond du Lac County. They would uh, offer their expertise across the whole area. And um, part of that area, the expansion cost would be about $10,900, and that's for all three, you know, that's what it would be the whole three. Currently, you pay a little bit, uh, about $22,000. Uh, $1,000 just for step, step for 50%. You're actually getting three quarters uh, coverage of uh, ag educators. In addition to that, that is not charged to the county, is that they're going to have some state specialists. I mean, more than we've had in the past. We have the Madison ones, but we're going to have extension ones. 
uh, they're going to be shared even wider than the area. I know one of the ones that is in development and it will be hired and ready to go in January is the soil health uh, regional specialist, and they'll work with the water uh, quality, and, and Ozaki is part of that too. Some of the things that I know there have been concerned with uh, going to this really highly specialization. What about the support, like for the master gardeners, which most of you know, they actually created and we've hired um, specialists that will just work with the master gardeners, with their hours, with the education. Um, our mm -hmm. office, of course, will offer uh, support, but it will be actually taken to um, um, more of that regional model and have specific people. So, any questions on that? Did I, did I not finish? How long do you think old Mike is going to hang around for? <laughs> I, I can't ask that question to him, but uh, he has a uh, 28 years, I know, an extension. So I don't know when he will retire. He's very excited about the regionalization, uh, so that's good. Um, <laughs> They all are really uh, excited and they have worked collaboratively in the past. So I think uh, area 15, that's our area, will, will lead the state in this regionalization. They're already talking about, okay, how can we do this? What are we gonna do? I said, let's wait, <laughs> you know, cause they're already starting to plan, which we have to make sure, uh, you know, it's approved by all the counties. Uh, as of right now, the other three counties supported 100%. Mm -hmm. Yep, they're all- So three counties, Tarkina, Mike, and who's the third one? Yeah, uh, Tina Coleman and Mike Bowie. Those three. For me? Yep. Okay. Any questions on that one? So increased their budget about you know, eleven thousand dollars. However, we are moving uh, uh, support staff that we had uh, from twenty-eight hours down to twenty hours with efficiencies that we're we're looking at. So that you know will help with that with our budget. Then up, the next expansion uh, request is for a marketing specialist for the area. And I, I since I am the area director, I, I look at things to, from that level. Um, currently, we have a marketing specialist that works in Fond du Lac and Sheboygan County. I mean, she's already there. Uh, so Fond du Lac, uh, they started the thing before I was um, on board. And I've been here a little over four years. And then two years ago, I brought it to Sheboygan County. I said, look, we need some additional support with the expertise in marketing. So she's been doing that also, you know, shared between the, the two and Sheboygan for two years. Uh, I talked to Washington County. It's already in the budget. We're all set with that. Um, and then now I'm here with, with you to see if you'll we'll support that. Ideally, what I had in mind is the area for four counties. However, I did have another... Um, area director like me asked if they could be included with one of their counties. So if this proposal went forward with my area, it would also include this other area. So we'd have five counties that we would share this um, uh, marketing specials with. And, and if that was as good as that, uh, with that is I started a little over uh, $18,000 for each county. Well, maybe, no, let's not go down. Um, with an uh, additional county, it would be a, a little over $14,000 per county to be able to pay for that. Uh, Kathy is the marketing person that we have really? currently. And she, um, what she does, I know because people ask marketing is all different. Uh, she does our reporting. We, uh, she pulls our reports so that goes to our committees. Um, she does a web, um, the web um, updates. Um, she also does our videos. We haven't, you know, you know, that would be here uh, in both Sheboygan and um, uh, Fond du Lac County and our videos. Besides creating the short videos, they have to be closed captioned uh, to make sure. So that's another component of it. With Right now in Ozaukee County, our educators do some marketing, but really their focus is on education, program design, research. So we really don't do it uh, to the level that we could do it. And with, as you know, we compete with other organizations and we would really like to be able to get out uh, the impact that we're making as well as the opportunities that are in Ozaki County. And our counties really share across this, especially with that regionalization egg, this will be instrumental to help them be able to communicate it out in all of the five counties, four counties. Do you have any questions on that? 
And how many counties have committed all but ours or? All, all but uh, this one, yep. For both positions. Um, just the the regional ag is the board and all the counties we're just waiting for Ozaki to buy in. Fond du Lac, Washington, and Sheboygan are all set. It's all in the budget uh, for next year. So we're just waiting for that. And then the marketing person, it's just, it's, um, Walworth County is our outside one, outside of our area. Fond du Lac, Sheboygan, and Washington have already bought into the marketing position. So really, this is uh, Ozaki, you know. Ozaki, I'm just waiting for Ozaki. Best for last. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it also is how the budgets fall. Yeah, you know, too. Well, <laughs> this is my last budget uh, budget in the area. So they still go if we don't do it, they're still going to go forward with us. The regional, no. The regional ag will not happen without Ozaki support. We can't do it just with the three. It needs to be. We can't just do it no, it's not budget. in the budget. It's in not in our budget. The marketing the same. Uh, it will go with the, yeah, it will go forward without Ozaki's support because I have that other buying in from uh, Walworth County. So we had to have four counties to be able to make it viable with the cost and try to keep the cost as low as we can. What's great about this position, too, if we, we can get it here, uh, she worked with Madison um, to develop a, mar a strategic marketing plan for the area and county specific. If that we don't get her, that cannot, that won't be included. I mean, we'll just be doing what we've done in the past. The educators market when they can. We do uh, the reporting, you know, like we do, but they won't be to the level the other ones. So we won't have the videos. We won't have the other opportunities. And the breakdown was for marketing was fourteen. It'll be about fourteen thousand five hundred with the five counties. Five for marketing. Yep. And then about eighteen. It's 18.5 with uh, okay. four counties. The egg is 10,900. Oh, okay. I, I've increased. Uh, increased. So 11, roughly. So 14.5 and 11. Yep. 11. Yep. 45.5 total. Yeah. <laughs> So can I ask you what? So in 2020, your budget was actually 191,000 expenses. It says, and then adopted for 2021 was 236,000. So what's all that? What you just said from last year to this year? Because I don't have that in front of me. Oh, this is what we have here. Yeah, but that numbers. Oh, 191,236. So it's like 45,000 more. Uh, I don't know. Well, the, the expansion, of course, the expansion grant, and then the educators' uh, salaries do go up each year, about two percent. Um, that's the one thirty-six contract, so that goes up. And then the, and any of the support staff increases. I don't think in this budget that reduction in from twenty-eight hours support staff to twenty is in there, right? I think you're looking at the twenty twenty actual supervisor Maltech. Yeah. Well. I did. I said actual. Yeah. It actually was this. So that's what you expect. I think it's two things. We switched over to a traditional or from a traditional contract to a 60-40. The, the type of contract we have for the educators changed in 2019 yeah. or 2020. So, uh, it's more 50-50. Yeah, we, 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 we had a cheaper version, for lack of a better way to put it. Up until that point, and I think there was also an opening in the department then when um, Barb was, I think she was on board in 2020, maybe. Yeah, and we didn't have a 4 position for a while. Remember, we had a vacant oh, position there right. too, Jane has only been on for a short period of time. This budget does assume that everyone will be, every position will be staffed. I have 33,000 for the marketing position. Let's combine together. Well, you just said 20, 24, 9. I don't have the numbers in front of me. It's, it's, uh, I would have to look at that, but whatever's in our budget is correct. So yeah. it says 33. And that's with the 18,500. That, that's with that, because I didn't have Walworth on there. Would be a all five of you. That would be if it went down to the five counties, mm -hmm. right? Right. I budgeted for four counties. So right, it still doesn't add up, but I think it's 18 but you think it's 18 and 
the 18 5 goes to 14 5, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's we're signing up, but that still leaves more than 11. You had said 10 9 for the egg, mm -hmm. so it must be more, egg must be more than 10 9. This step is 22,000, then you add the 10 9 on top of that, so that's where you get that. Right now, you pay for step blaster 50%, which is 22,000, and I don't know the rest of it and then and on top of that because you're getting two other people it's for those two other people it's 11 about eleven thousand dollars nine ten thousand nine hundred that doesn't that doesn't make sense about the marketing position it's step marketing stuff no. well she's just a yeah. so, but she's 22 22 000. she's she's shared with eleven thousand okay and then what about for the marketing if we have all five counties, yes, it's 14, over 14. So it's 33 plus 14. To me, I think the 33 is the wrong number. I, I think it's 14, five plus 10, nine is what I'm hearing. Because 22 is already in the budget, right? So that's not so an that's expansion not request. Correct. So it shouldn't nine. be an expansion. It's fully budgeted. That's what okay, so, that, so 33 is not the number, it's, it's 20. 25, four, 25,400. I know it was, the, I think I it was under four, a four county scenario, and now it's a five county. Yeah, that yeah, would be only at four grand, though, too. It would make it 29,500. So it's still, we're still $4,000 off. In addition to the five counties, we have the five counties, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just that it's 30. Um, yeah, I'm saying it's 25.4, it's 10.9 for the one and 14.5 for the other, right? That's mm -hmm. the, the, those are your only expansion requests. Mm -hmm. and that totals 25.4. Okay. This round is up. She's already got the other county. Yes. Has yeah, she's got four. I have four. Sure. Yeah. As long as it goes through the final budget. Yep. Yep. It's like the board has to vote. Yeah. Right. It's right. in the right. budget. For all yeah. four so it's either 14 or not. I mean, it's, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this budget was created without that fifth county in mind because I didn't know if they were going to buy in. <clears throat> okay. What, what do you need from me? And no, I, I this. We're either approving 25.4 or not. Or a 10.9 or something else or whatever. Thank you. No, sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's fine. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, it's going down, not up. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. If you need additional stuff from me, I can get it.
this has been a difficult year for us and will continue to be a difficult year in our budgeting. We have um, been hit with a couple of things. Our uh, ability to increase our revenues has been reduced by um, us doing a good job with SDC and collecting old debt. And we're kind of like uh, the jail with borders and that well is drying up. So we're not able to bring in as much. We're staying current, which is good. But we are, the amount that we can collect is, is reducing. Um, our salary increases are just steps, but that's 25,000. Our courtroom technology service agreement was another 20,000 that was unexpected and that we assumed wrongly that it was going to be part of the package deal and be able to be purchased all in one year. It is not, we have to drag it out. It is still cheaper than us hiring an individual to help us with the technology part of the video conferencing in our courtrooms. And the other um, driver was the health insurance, which sounds like it's going to go down um, by the great negotiations the county has been able to do. So I'm sorry the levy has gone up, but um, that's the reality of what we're sitting in. Um, one of our positions currently is unfilled and that may be um, looking to fill it in either as someone to help with the changes with Marcy's laws. We've had some discussion about that here or with the technology once our service agreement is completed. Do you have any questions, concerns that I can help you with today? Any questions for Mary? Um, I guess, maybe, I'm sorry, maybe you just said something about this discovery coordinator. Could you explain that a little more, that the new? I'll ask you, Adam. Right, it's, that's his position. Mine is something, mine might be in the future something totally different. We're looking at how to assign tasks within our department. Hopefully we will we don't know what we're going to do with this part-time position at this point, but, but we know we have extra tasks that have been assigned to us by the legislature. So, yeah, well, so let me ask you this. You, you got all the, you, I know you needed some uh, reconstruction of the office work, and some construction done. Are you, is that all set now? You're, all, you're fully funded on all that? The past? Um, the, one te the one item that we received for extra funding this year was for uh, ex expanding the two small jury deliberation rooms into one large jury deliberation room that was supposed to begin in September. Um, it is being done in-house by the Justice Center Maintenance Department. They have had some setbacks with um, people being out and we are scheduled now to begin on the 18th of October. Thank you. Welcome. Anything for Mary Lou? Well, the office remodel and the jury seating is something we're going to deal with at a different time. Is that correct? That, that is my understanding. We did have a CPU um, for electricity. I and um, Ryan Takis would be better be able to explain the status of that. It did come through my budget. Um, last I heard, we were waiting on one small part, uh, and then that would be completed also, so that we would be able to have emergency electricity on the first floor as well as um, the lower floor, or my floor, I should say. Depends on which floor you're on that you consider first floor. Any 
Thank you. All good. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, supervisors. Good luck. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye now. Adam. Good morning. Um, I'm Adam Gear. I'm here with my victim witness coordinator, Lisa Hosh, as well as the office manager, June Marks. And I apologize for appearing by Zoom. I, I kind of got the impression it was the preferred way to do this, but if you'd rather have us come down there in person, I would, I would be glad to, five minutes away. Um, the, the one thing I did note looking at the, the budget packet submission was the organizational chart is a, a little off. I think June had submitted in addition to it, but I, I did want to make clear that we now have 3.6 assistant DAs in the office, myself and 3.6 other people. Um, my office is fully staffed as well as the support staff people that you see. Our part-time paralegal position is, is currently funded um, with the responsibilities that I've been alluding to as a discovery specialist. Um, she would be the incumbent if you approve the increase to full time, although I do believe that it'll be a little uh, a little space of time before she would be able to assume this work full time. Um, in addition, it, it kind of blends in because the, the fiscal effect is so small, but the increase of the part time victim witness specialist to full time will also allow us to assume some needs. Um, I, I don't want to jump ahead, and I think. I, I know for a fact I've got the unfortunate tendency to sometimes drone on, which is um, bad enough for the juries, but it's, it's awful for you. So if there are some specific questions, I'd be glad to ask them. Otherwise, uh, unfortunately, you're at the peril for having me go on for 15 or 20 minutes, probably. Can I just ask you about your, your, your workload? How is that holding up? Is it really record levels or is it come back down a little bit? It's come back down a little bit. Um, it Obviously, these are strange times in the criminal justice system. Um, we're dealing with a court system down in Milwaukee that that more or less isn't running, where the, the I don't think the majority of judges are still back. The courts are not moving at all. And for at, at the beginning of the year, it, it seemed like we were going to have an overwhelming blast of felony numbers. My felony projections were trending towards over 500 felonies, which is an extraordinarily high increase. That's scaled back down so far. So as of this point in time, we're at 341 felonies projecting out to be somewhere in the low 400s. Now that, that would put us at pace with last year, which was significantly above the year before it. When I came back as DA in 2009, I think we were at right around 300 felonies or so a year. So the, the numbers are still very high. Um, but it, it wasn't the scary numbers that we were looking at for a time. Um, the other advantage that we've had here in Ozaukee County is that the court system has been running extremely well. The cases are, are moving along, even with the challenges that we have with COVID. Except for a couple of months at the beginning of the problem, we're still trying cases. Um, we, we make the trials happen. Cases are getting disposed of. So we're not like... Um, I, I'm sure you've so, seen in the news where Waukesha has had to task county money to pay for, I think, a new court commissioner and some additional court positions to deal with COVID backlog. Milwaukee, I have no doubt, will go to the state because they have so um, prepared, so, so very poor in that regard. But we're doing well. We don't have those issues. Okay, great. Thank you. Good to hear. That's good. And, and that's on the judges and the court report. They, they've, they've done a very good job keeping operations moving. So Adam, uh, it's Marty Wolf. Do I understand then from the, your organizational chart that instead of two assistant district attorneys, you have, did you say 3.6? Correct, we have 3.6, three full-time in a part-time position we share with Washington County. So I'm sorry. So the, the discovery coordinator, so that so I understand that's what's going to full time, or what is that new? That's a new position completely. Part time to full time. That's the full time. Um, okay. 
the positions morphed a little bit. It originally the paralegal position that, that the county board created when Sandy Williams was the DA did different things, mostly handled uh, an ordinance docket and, and how ordinance cases moved along. We, we deal with that through the attorneys right now, but the biggest complication that we have is dealing with discovery, dealing with all of the police reports and things that we must share with the defense by law. And that's become a problem for two different reasons. The, the first, um, the, the largest, most um, imminent reason is a decision out of the uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court a couple of years ago called State versus Wayerski. And that in many ways changed the, the practical way that we handle discovery. Under, before Wayerski, the obligation to provide discovery was constitutional and statutory. Constitutional was we have to give the defense anything that is exculpatory, anything that says that they might be innocent. And we have to give that to them whether they ask for it or not. But then there was the statutory discovery, which is upon a demand, we have to give um, basically everything that isn't privileged to the defense upon demand. Under Wayerski, it became very clear that if the government had anything, either in their possession or in the hands of some other branch of government, like DSS or something, then we were basically presumed to give it all to the defense um, at, at our peril. And that became a massive burden, which um, I, when Justice Kelly was running for re-election, I, I said to him, if this is the new standard, can you at least you clarify it? Because it sounds right now that if some police officer was working on a case involving the same defendant in another county and had some notes written on a post-it note in his cubicle, then we were obligated to know about that and turn that over. And he, he had promised me that they would revisit it again, but of course he lost his reelection. They've never gone there. It is one thing I intend to bring up with the justices when they're here in the county next week. It's like, what about Wayerski? But then there's the second issue, which is in every case that we have, no, let me back up, I'm old, okay? I, I confess to you people I'm old, which must make some of you people feel really old. Um, but I, here's the issue. When I first started, our cases consisted of police reports. That was it. We had typewritten stuff and handwritten statements. And Discovery was just copying that and giving that to the defense. And with each passing year, we have more data. We have the, it began with the, the computerized data and notes that the jail might have kept or other things. And, and, and I won't belabor this, but to say the moment every agency added squad cams, there was a whole incremental level of data that we had to turn over to the defense. And then with each body cam, there's additional megabytes and gigabytes of data. And we're presumed to have access to all of it. Whether we have time to review it or not, it's a different question but we have to give all that to the defense. Now, as many of you heard, I personally believe that we, we save the county budget because we bill for that data that we share with the defense every year, um, which you know provides to the county an additional $15,000 of revenue, which is, I know, life-saving. But struggling to, to actually do our constitutional obligation is harder and harder. Um, the Sheriff's Department and all of the police agencies some of this data they only retain for 120 days. So we have to make sure we get it. And that can't be accomplished through, even though we have a great relationship with law enforcement, but that can't be accomplished um, using the tools that we've had in place since 92 or the resources of the legal secretaries. So I've tried to task the paralegal with responsibility to of making sure we have all the data we need and then uh, in coordination with the, the way we've always handled discovery in our office, making sure we copy it, distribute it, bill it. We're using all of the technology that's available to us. Um, Mr. Zwinell will see very soon that we're going to be upgrading our, our, our bandwidth, our speed that we access the internet with at a cost of 120 bucks a month to see if we can take better advantage of the online tools that the state provides us. But we're at a loss simply for the number of hands that we need to make sure we have what we need, we copy it and we share it. And that's, that's, the, um, that's the, the additional, that, that's 
retitling the paralegal discovery coordinator and the fact that she needs more hours. And, and I, I won't be shy about this. If it, 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 I, I don't know that we can accomplish it solely through these increased hours. And you can expect that this might be um, something you want me to update you with next year. And I'll certainly be keeping the public safety committee updated with this with each month. Anything you want to add, Adam? Um, in, in a similar way, we've asked for some additional hours for our victim witness specialist. Um, I think those total about eight thousand dollars a year. So I'm sure it's it, it, it. All of you took notice of it. Um, but the there's additional requirements that impacted us a little bit by Marcy's law. But that's not really what it is. I think we handled all of the Marcy's law requirements very well under existing resources. The part of the problem is with all of this additional technology stuff, there's more data to handle. And, and we, we just, the, the victim witness people need more time to do the job as best as they can. That's, that's really where that comes from. Anything else? So, uh, anything else, Adam, that you want to add? We have no more questions for you. No, no, thank you. Thank you very much, though. I, I tell people all the time that, that regardless of what you do with all these things, the DA's office in Ozaukee County has been treated extremely well by its county board. Thank you for that. Would, would your colleague, Lisa, have anything she wants to add while we're here? Hi, everybody. <laughs> that I need to right now. Just checking. Thank you. You said the right thing, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Adam. Who's up? All right, thank, thank you very much. Public works come up next there. We did not hear from the coroner, so unless you want to hear from him. We didn't hear from registered deeds or court counsel. I don't know if there's any questions on those. Anybody have any questions there that you need to ask the coroner? If not, Mr. Edgar is ready to regale us with his. Regale us. Yeah, I'm working on. I was actually planning to head down there. If, if you guys are ready for me, I'll jump on in the car right now. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the phrase? Yeah, we can see you. <laughs> I think they're saying continue on Zoom. Sir. I'm pretty sure we can nail it right from where you are. I don't know. They're doing chocolate chip cookies. They are really good. You better come down. When you're done, you can come down. <laughs> start zooming on your phone and driving. <laughs> okay. All right, we're ready, Mr. Edgar. All right, I think Ryan Takis is on his way down there. Let me go see if I can grab Julie Zunell real quick and have her jump on then as well. I can tell. She's good too. Bring some to go containers. All right, I'm I'm back again. If we want to start maybe with transit, Joy is in. Uh, on a flight right now, so she is not going to be here, so I'm going to cover transit. Okay. Yeah, I think three status quo budgets here. Um, 
Transit's down, yeah. As you know, transit's down. We took out the levy from the bus system in this budgetary assumption, but we did not eliminate it from the budget. We moved it into the capital uh, projects fund. So if in the event that the bus goes gangbusters and we start it up again, we'll be able to move that levy out of the capital projects fund and put it back into the transit fund with really no no impact. Our yeah, sh shared ride taxi has been doing very well. I don't know if you have anything else to add, John, on uh, transit. No, I think that's about it. I, I think uh, pretty much what we have um, in there is mostly for matching and then some shared ride taxi. Um, we could maybe take it down a little bit more as well, but we're trying to make sure we have enough in the CARES funding to cover the express bus for a couple of years. And then if we cut that short, then we would just move those funds over to the shared ride taxi at that point. We should see several um, capital purchases. I think we currently have five or yeah, I think we have about five vehicles still on back order. Unfortunately, it's taking a while. So when we hit 2022, we'll have a couple more that we probably need to replace. Um, we'll see if we can get those any faster, but everything my understanding is vehicles are, are not getting produced really quickly for the next year or two. Vehicles, you mean by dump trucks? Uh, no, this is for transit. This is the um, sorry, transit car. Sorry, never mind. Yep. I was jumping ahead here. I was looking at all the chips. Anything else for transit? Otherwise, we can. No questions for transit. Brian, Brian and Joe are both here, Mr. Yeah. Adrian. Brian is here. Joe is here. I was going to say, I, I could see them hiding in the background. So, um, where do you want to start with facilities? They just say you're a cookie, too, Joe. Yeah, they're eating cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you guys take the <laughs> Brian, you can throw one at my window as you drive past. Um, so I'll, I'll start with uh, administration. Administration, certainly Joe is there. He can jump in or answer any questions, but they're down a little bit. Biggest change there is we did have one full-time staffing position. Um, she retired. Um, she went, the, the health insurance she carried went away with her as well. We have a, ended up bringing her back on a part-time basis. Um, uh, but that's where you see probably the biggest drop in the funding for administration. Um, within the, the item, it does talk about that there are five position reviewed for upgrades. Um, I believe that those are getting held off for the salary study. I can, those were the basis of Ryan Takis as he took over for uh, Justice Center, took a look at some of the surrounding counties and facilities and felt that what our uh, staff were doing uh, were above where they were in comparison to the other counties. So we believe that'll get shown out in the um, salary study regardless. So uh, the, that, that's what that refers to. Any questions on administration? Not seeing any. All right, um, Justice Center, um, biggest thing with Justice Center is again, just a little bit up, there is some additional monies we're trying to get in there, um, a little bit for some interior maintenance. Um, I think there was an elevator lighting project we're gonna try to, that initially was looked at as a capital improvement program project. And then we initially, uh, and then we said, we would just take a little bit more money into the interior budgeting and cover the elevator lighting with that. Um, additionally, then there is a little bit as well for some exterior work as we're still trying to finish off uh, the site, the concrete sidewalks around the building that we started uh, replacing a few years ago, but haven't gotten back to um, the five positions I talked about similar for here that there's uh, three of them are in Justice Center to our administration about getting those bumps. Those are going to be looked at as part of the salary study. Otherwise, there are a few other items, I believe, such as uh, DA's carpeting and an air compressor that I think we're going to get pulled out and potentially funded. Um, 
during this year with some excess um, CIP revenues. Well, so as far as elevators go, how do you know about her, any work or replacement of the elevators? Has that ever come up? Subject? We, are they in good working, working order? We had some problems, I know. At the Justice Center? It's not towards the Justice Center. Yeah, we have. Or no, I mean, no, this building. Yeah. This building. We have, you know what we have, Joe. Is that the elevator working fine now? Those elevators are outstanding. We just had one hiccup, and there's nothing wrong with them. I'm sorry that we spent a million dollars yep. on them. They're working flawless. <laughs> There was a, it was a, for those that aren't aware, there was a mighty big hiccup when I, when I believe the supervisor Geraci may have got to a little bit of claustrophobia <laughs> getting to hang out in a sweat box for a few hours. Uh, we did, we did actually have an independent consultant look at the elevators and they also looked at the response that was, that happened. And, you know, oh, I you know, know. It was a situation, although there were people stuck in there a while, yeah. the independent consultant's report, which I shared with the county board chairman was, you know, they really acted as smartly and as quickly as, as they could. You know, you one thing you can't do if you saw that recent accident in Atlanta where the young man was was severed. Yeah. Um, you can't just open the doors and start pulling people out unless there's a real a real emergency because obviously the the risk of something traumatic like someone being Severed in two pieces is, is far greater than having them wait in an elevator for for, a little, bit, for a little bit of time. What's that? We oh, have two oh, can't oh, oh, that right? Oh, yeah. 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 One day, what is it all? Yeah. yeah. But I, I, you know, Joe, Joe went on. We did it. We had an independent review of everything that went on. You know, we understand that the elevator repair guy is in West Bend, yeah. and he had to come from West Bend at, at rush hour, but between the eight and nine in the morning, so. I, I guess the biggest concern was if somebody had gotten ill. I mean, then, then you, know, then you would, then you would, have, or like but, that. Well, but nobody, true. but nobody was. And if somebody was, then the fire department would come and open up the elevators. But it's, it's all about the risk, and the bigger risk is pulling somebody out of a, an elevator between floors and then having it start, start to move. Yeah. And if, and if well, there's a, study, an independent study showed all good. Yep. Yep. And those are, and they're annually inspected and it's just a fluke accident. Uh, what we're really talking about with this item was more of, I think it's some lighting, Ryan, with the. Um, That's correct. The, the elevator lighting lighting. The elevator is terrible and we can't get the parts anymore. In order to replace it, they have to construct a whole new elevator top. And it's the beauty part of it. So that's why it's. $15,000. Is there one elevator in the building? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that one elevator in the building or, or how many elevators are in the building? We have three, but that the elevator I'm referencing is the public elevator. There's only one of these. Correct. Can I ask another thing about um, the boiler um, that we that talked about? What's the status with that? I just uh, talked to the uh, engineer uh, about an hour ago and uh, actually tomorrow he's going to uh, have several engineers review all of his work to make sure that everything's accurate and then it'll be uh, done shortly after that to get it out on bids it, it was pretty complex because we were dealing with uh, some very old system and we're trying to change it to modern so of course there's all these you know uh, engineering issues that uh a few that he didn't foresee that took a little longer than he thought. But um, he has done a lot of work um, for Ozaki County and all of his engineering has been spot on. We haven't had him put in a system where it didn't cool or didn't heat. Or, so we're, we're in good hands with him, just double checking everything. With the COVID, the project got severely delayed. The funds were, were frozen, so he had to take on a lot of other work. So then we, you know, we got, uh, as soon as we gave him the purchase order, then he was able to get started, but he had had a lot of other commitments too as well. So some of it was uh, a little slow getting him started on our end, you know, giving him the go ahead. But um, I thought the question would come up in the meeting. So I reached out to him, how far are you? I think someone's gonna ask me, and sure enough, he had 
Two o'clock, you got that time. Yeah. yeah. And it's all taken care of, Jason, the budget with capital budget. The boiler and the boiler? No, I think we have to get a final number. Yeah, well, the idea of the study was to give us um, a range of what we would be looking at. So that has not been included with any bonding or other costs to this point. So the cost of the study is covered, but the yeah. cost of the okay, that's what was like. So we had we initially had attempted to uh, write a grant for that. Uh, although Mr. Wittick has been on a bit of a hot streak, he wasn't able to secure the grant for that. <laughs> For that one, we it wasn't a very sexy project. We were competing against some some. Uh, City of Milwaukee beat us out on that one. Hey, John. Yep. Uh, Rick Nelson here. Um, I have a question on uh, outside maintenance. I guess at the Justice Department or. You're walking into uh, the <clears throat> sheriff's office at the lower level. That would be on the southwest corner. That walk that goes in, right and then there's a hill uh, on your left that goes up towards the memorial. And that whole area just looks like it really could use a, a lot of TLC. It the grass and the lawn around there really looks pretty ragged. Is, is there anything that we could do to make that look a little more attractive? Well, well certainly, uh, Rick, I owe you the five bucks for, for bringing up this question. Um, as we'll talk about it a little bit, uh, one of the items I know that's not approved, um, we are looking at trying to get a, a full-time staff person out at Fairgrounds because we have had to basically run one of our Justice Center facilities people down to Fairgrounds about half time um, or a third of a time at least. Uh, to try to maintain and, and keep those buildings afloat down there. And so certainly one of the things we've had is we've had a loss of some of the maintenance and, and simple maintenance that we do at the Justice Center. But no, we can certainly take a look at that and see if there's a way to kind of touch that up a little bit. So it's just, you, you, we got the memorial up there that was all redone, it looks terrific. And, you know, anybody walking in, looking up there, it just, it, it's almost takes away from the, Beautiful memorial we've done. So I'd appreciate that. Sure, we can take a look. So there isn't anything budgeted for maintenance at the fairgrounds. No, we'll add that to the list. So any other questions on the justice? Otherwise, I'll jump to fairgrounds. There's no maintenance at the fairgrounds right now. Uh, just three part time staff. Three, but... Yeah. And now they're probably picking up again. Yes, they are. Um, so I think that really. Okay, we so, can jump to So now, now I need to owe Kathy five bucks as well for, for bringing that in. But no, I, you know, that certainly is where I think Ryan and taking over for as the building superintendent has been looking at, whether it be the pavilion or the curlers building, both at around that 10 to 12 years age, you have um, the gazebo and the exhibit center, both at around six to eight years of age. We're, we're starting to see that without regular care, they're starting to kind of show themselves a little bit. And so we have three part-time staff, but those are mostly there to kind of do cleaning and pick up after events. Um, they do some mowing and such, but that's where this year Ryan has taken one of our full-time Justice Center staff and tried to put them downtown. Um, certainly in, in looking at a budget item, um, there, there is some savings we, we do believe we can find that if we have a full time person down there, they can do some of the snow plowing that we currently pay, you know, 10 grand a year to do. Additionally, they could reduce some of the part time hours um, for doing things like mowing and those things. So there are some offsets, but it still would be uh, a pretty big add uh, to get a full time staff position. But it, we do feel it is something and that the long term will need to be done. What would the uh, cost of a full time? Maintenance fee. I thought it was net plus sixty thousand dollars because I thought it was around assuming benefits that it would. I thought it was around eighty, and then we thought we could take ten off for snow plowing and ten off for part time hours. Does that sound about right, Ryan? That's correct. Yes. The ice is on. Ice is on. We're ready for your first. We're ball. ready. We're ready for my first bond spiel. <laughs> you know it is. 
Learn to curl this Friday at 7 p.m., Lee. Uh, we're gonna get him out there. Mm -hmm. All the way up to the window. He's gonna wear his golf shoes down so he doesn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> wear my ice fishing boots with the cleats. Any other questions on fairgrounds? Any other questions on fairgrounds, anybody? No, that's really Okay, move on. All right. And then highway, we're, we're nice and boring and exactly where we've been the last couple of years, where we're uh, kind of assuming uh, about a, a quarter, like a 250,000 um, dip into reserves. I believe we're sitting at somewhere just under $2 million in reserves. So we've kind of looked at a, maintaining the same budget and potentially dipping into that. I think with um, a concrete project a year ago, we thought we were gonna be about 800,000 under, under or 800,000 over budget and pull that all from reserves. And we ended up only being about $200,000 over. And so there's still um, a good bit of reserves in there. And certainly if the time comes, we'll come in and look for um, some additional funding. But for right now, I was fine with uh, Administrator Winnell's recommendation to keep it flat. Any new equipment on highway? Oh, always. All the time. <laughs> Every day. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> The biggest thing we're looking at probably there is um, as as many places, you know, there's always you wish you had that one more person, you wish you had a, a little bit more staff. And so one of the things we're going to start doing is we have a number of triaxle trucks and uh, we're going to begin budgeting to potentially put those in as quad axles um, with the idea being that those are the main haulers of asphalt and gravel. And that if we can get those over a, a series of three to four years and, and start to replace a number of the triaxles, that may free up a staff person to be able to go and do other things like mowing and that type of thing or trash pickup. Um, and it would be one less driver then. So that's that's probably the big item of next year, looking to start getting into that. Well, considering I was pushing for quad axle trucks two highway committee chairmen ago already, I'm happy to finally come through. Thanks, sir. Okay. John, as far as uh, the work on I-43 and all the construction and, and things like that, so the additional you know trucks and everything going around, is that is that going to affect us on highway and, and, our, and do we get we run into problems with them at all or? Um, no, that that is something that I know we've already started discussing internally. Um, so we just, for, for those of you that may not know, we have an annual count contract with the DOT. It's called an RMA or a routine maintenance agreement. It's for, I believe, about $1.2, $1.3 million. And that is then funding any asphalt work, redo concrete work, as well as any um, um, plowing and, and winter you know, maintenance, those type things. Um, I know I've talked to Kenosha and Racine County as they've seen the increased lanes down along 94. Um, they've given me some estimates as far as how much more work it is. And the idea will be is as we enter 22 and those lanes begin to getting formed, I'll be putting some uh, writings into the DOT requesting upgrades in that RMA contract uh, to hopefully balance or, or give us that additional money we need for the additional snow plowing services. And, and along those lines, I just want to, I want to get it. Uh, you and I talked a little bit about this, about companies that are coming in and working for the DOT, private companies, and then they've got to use our, they've got to set up a big, you know, big plant or whatever for, for asphalt or whatever. And then they use our roads. And a constituent asked me about the possibility of tipping fees or something for the because of road road problems that they cause us, or then there's a town and everyone else gets some road issues. So is there is there anything that, that we just wait and see, or what's going on? What would happen with that? No, yeah, you had asked me about that. I asked around a little bit. I, I probably need to do some more digging on that. Um, I've never heard of anything with tipping fees. I know that on some state projects, uh, when they do those state projects, they're required to have trucks that, um, that that they use hauling routes that only go on county and state highways with the idea being that the local roadways aren't as um, built, well built or aren't built structurally for the large trucks that have to go through. Um, 
I, like I said, I, I've never heard of anything like tipping fees. I think the idea is typically that those trucks are going to be under official weight as required. Um, so I'm not quite sure how you would um, you know, punish them. I think in the past, John, I've heard of uh, towns bonding where the, where the construction firm will bond for a covered air road damage and things. That, that's yeah, and I've seen that with town roads. Again, when when a contractor or a, pre, or a project needs to utilize more of a local road, then I've seen them kind of put some guarantees in place. Um, it's something I haven't seen with county or state highways, but we can certainly try talking to them. But, you know, something we need to get done sooner rather than later then. Thank you. John, I've got Corey here. Um, I think the I can't, what year, how many years ago do we have that grinding up on the uh, north end of uh, 43 um, from Port to uh, Sheboygan? Remember we ground that we- Yeah, I, th I think that was two to three years ago. Because I'm just concerned in that I've been driving it and mm -hmm. it seems to be starting to get bouncy again. I agree. And well, that's only that, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Wasn't that just a diamond grind to take yes. the real rough stuff? That's what it was. Well, it was, but they said it was Yeah. Yeah, they said it was going to last so, so long, and man, I, I tell you what. Well, if I if I remember correctly, Don, actually, what, what had occurred with that thing was, yeah, it's a concrete road. Um, at the time they built it, they didn't have the, the slabs tied together, so they start to separate right. over time. Um, I don't remember the exact... I don't remember the exact years offhand, but I what I believe it was is they put that in, and within ten years they did a diamond grind on it. And I think that I think it was built in '69, no, built in '79, diamond ground in '89, diamond ground again in '99. That's when they expected to do it in '09 again, but instead they kicked it, and I think it ended up being sometime around 2018, 2019. Um, that they actually diamond ground it. So no, it, it historic history would tell you it needs to be done about every ten years, and they just didn't do it for twenty years last time. So what do we do? <laughs> Nothing, huh? I mean, uh, write your congressman and try to see what kind of hundred of millions of that they can put toward looking to put that in. But the reality is, if they were looking to redo that road, they're probably looking 10 or 15 years out regardless. So it may be something that we could write and uh, attempt to start getting some um, noise on. Uh, most of my issues with the most of my issues with the DOT right now is I'm trying to get them to push money toward 181 on the south side of Mequon, south of Mequon Road. Poxane rods in to to tie the uh, uh, slabs together. Yep. Um, I don't they, know. Wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't they do it. it. They want to spend the money, but yep. they, they said it would. Yep, correct. I think. Um, who do we talk to to say it's getting bad already and it's only been three years? I mean, uh, I think it's being used much more. And and the, the thing is, what drives me nuts, and we talked about this, that, you know, Sheboygan is in a different uh, zone, but Sheboygan's redone their road from, from, uh, how do I um, Yeah, all the way north twice already since then. Yep. Since 89. Sure. Yeah, how do we get in the we need to get ourselves drafted to the northeast region. Unfortunately, we, we go up in the southeast region against 90 and 94. But no, Don, let me um let me reach out to one of the heads of maintenance and just kind of start probing the idea that hey, if this thing is already starting to fail and and I don't know that the DOT is gonna have the stomach to diamond grind again in seven years. You know, do we need to start looking at, and, and again, this isn't going to be a great answer for you, but do we need to look at them trying to put it on a majors contract? Because those majors contracts, those things may take 15 years to build, but at least then it would be in line and starting to come forward. So I, I can reach out and try to see if there's a contact there. The unfortunate part about 
about it is, is it's right at the Sheboygan County line oh, right. where it turns into a beautiful road. Right. And I get all these calls about well, why Ozaki County isn't doing anything about it. And, you know, I try and explain to them, well, when you have the big Mitchell interchange and you get the zoo interchange, that kind of sucks the money out of our district, right? Yeah. Brand new stuff. Yeah. We get, we get, <laughs> Sorry about that, Lee. I probably shouldn't have have your phone number posted for any I forty three. Oh, thank you, Brian. Josh, one other question on, on Rosa, a, a general thing. So, Highway sixty, the expansion is that still got the plans in the future? Do you know? Like no, you know, that? when that was the you know the big kerfuffle, if I would, that um, uh, that probably that has to be a good five, 10 years ago. That really was a planning study the DOT was looking at, you know, 30, 40, 50 years out. What was, if we're going to do this, what is gonna happen when we try to expand? Well, the reality is if they wanna expand it, they're gonna wipe out either the north side or the south side of the roadway. There's no way to expand. Um, but no, I, I don't think they've done anything else with that. And certainly the pushback on um, from downtown uh, Jackson was enough that I wouldn't see them doing anything other than probably attempting to, to route more traffic up NN um, and then maybe over to PV where the Washington County Fairgrounds is and to get on 4145 there, that type of thing. But no, those, those, are, those are more 20, 30, 40 year out type plans. Yeah, because one day came up a little bit of a discussion on it. And then, you know, obviously, you know, anyone sees the traffic patterns on Highway 60 and, and the, some of the growth. That we were talking about a new, um, some new construction, some new plants, or what was that? No, well, that business park. That business park here. up on Highway 60, yeah. west of Cedarburg. Yep. Or, yeah. And how much more traffic now that, that looks like it's going to be in the future also. But, it's a problem, you know. You see it growing every, you know, every time. Yeah. You know, on 60. As access to 43 is going to be tight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Be ridiculous. When they were doing that, yeah. 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 Just yeah. Right. they told me, 2040. 2040. Well, at least it's something. I mean, we won't be around for it, maybe. No. <laughs> we won't be complaining to us. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, it just makes sense. You're expanding how you 60. Widen it up so you can think between the eventually. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Is there anything else? Can can you say hi to Julie. Where is she? She's hiding back there. There, there she is. is. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Is there a report from the business manager at all, or she has nothing to add? Only, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you for that report. <laughs> Plenty of cookies, John. If you want to come down and get some. Yeah, bring some to go because it's a new kind of expansion request. <laughs> <laughs> bring some to go containers for the guys. For the next yeah, I, I, get, I, I get my share cookies. I'll be all right today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think that's it. Thanks. Corners are not on Q, our BM, our other BM. Oh, you got both. Okay. You want to take a break or you want to get into it? Take a break. Break. Yeah. 3.30 at the latest. Let's mute. Welcome if you got them.
and they got sold in the business. Okay, we're back up in live. What you have in front of you, the staple piece of paper here, has all the uh, requests on. We have approximately pretty close to four hundred thousand dollars in sales tax revenue that we could use. If you there start going through and saying, "Hey, I think we should do this. I think we should do that," and we'll add up what we have. So just full disclosure, we just did this on the fly, so yeah. It might be a few thousand up yeah. or down. It's not yeah. the yeah. But we could massage the dollars, but we could get you the right idea. So this is how they, so like the, the UW extension one, that's how it was submitted to us, not yeah. based on the discussion. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, I see if you got that 60 in there for the the uh, fairgrounds. Yeah. For, so that, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's on there. It's, it's, a, on, the it's on the list. It's on the list. Okay. Mr. Chairman, should we? First, revisit the organizations that came into us yesterday to see if we want to maintain those current funding levels. Even okay. though we can take it any direction we want, we can we can start out. I mean, I I spoke to a couple of you before with that uh, youth apprenticeship program. I mean, I'm I myself am a strong believer in it. Just from the people that have talked to me since, and they wanted ten thousand. I actually. Would advocate fifteen thousand. Maybe you can. Well, my thought was on that line is taking money out of uh, one seven. One seven, one seven, and you have to um, have to that uh, pressure program and have to OED. You mean M six plus one? So just to be oh, clear, yeah. that was going to be to me, but he never, he never, he never mentioned Ozaki County, and then, and I was just tell, I was telling Marty, so Marty talked to him about the uh, Cedarburg uh, situation, and he goes, oh, he didn't even know about it, and that's his job. But then to make it the matters worse, you go, well, my wife and I go to uh, the winery. Maybe we'll, we'll go look for that. It's like, come on. And it's huge. It isn't just a oh, yeah. You can't miss it. It isn't a, it isn't a one acre block where you can do well, something. Right. 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 Just, <laughs> which is very it's disappointing. Like, and like Kathy said, he was just, he was really a schmoozer. You know, he made it sound everything so good. but. You know, maybe you want to mention Ozaki County in your. We're, we're just a bedroom community to them. Sir, do you want to take M7 from. Isn't that 5,000 right now? Is that 5 right now? You take that and give that uh, to Youth Apprentice. Can, can I just ask one thing? And I love the Youth Apprentice program too, but you know, you look at they said something about. It. But basically, those two guys, they work full time for that. And they're the salary people, right? They make they don't want to vote time for them. Well, they're school teachers, right? No, they're, no, no. they're devoted to that program. Oh, their hours are somewhere in the 30s, I believe. Yeah, 32, 30, 30, 32, 36, okay. something, something in that area. But I think it said that, you know, the hundred thousand or something like that of salary. Was that what it was? Yeah, I, yeah, I think you're right. Hundred four. They, just, they just send out a they yeah, financials they I sent out yesterday, I think. Right. So no, it seems good. Like I said, I just wanted to be clear that like yeah, those guys are getting paid for it. Well, it sounds like yeah, they, they get have... reimbursed pretty well, then if they get the kids from the program. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's... Well, that's how they, they pay their salaries, right. but I mean, yeah, yeah the, their I'd salaries like are pretty much program. in that program. So. Yeah. And that, that's their conundrum is, you know, that the state, if they if it's just state funding, they don't have enough to put more hours in to do more expansion, but they need to expand it in order to get more funding right, for students. So this would certainly help them get over that hump and, and hit it hard this year. Yeah. But they send an email or something. Yeah, it was a it was a one page kind of financial so, uh, yeah. sent it yesterday. And I think you said for the uh, expense and the revenue uh, equal each other. Do we even have to make a comment on that? Uh, I yeah I think we'd like let's just go through yeah let's go through the list I think okay. uh, question for you do we do we report back to like one seven and say well, how much we get Jason will send them an email 
Okay, if you can send an email on the lines of, uh, we decided that we're going to give the money that we gave you last year, but we're going to put it into, um, you know, some, somebody who's concerned with Ozaki County, something on that one. You know. I'm okay, you see, I'm the only one who ever defends those guys. No, you know, I know for you, it seems like every year. So I'm the only one that says anything, you know, but I do. I look at it more like what Kathleen says is that their, their organization, while they don't directly help us very much, I understand compared to other areas. But it's more the whole regional thing. If they're helping the Milwaukee area, Kenosha, they're helping the whole seven counties, that can help Ozaki County. So, and I think. Yeah, but uh, well, all mean, these counties are giving 10 grand, but they're all getting something back. We're not getting, getting anything back. Yeah. Not getting yeah. We should get it. Yeah. We could give a thousand just to stay in it. Well, well, I, uh, you know, and I, I guess maybe I should give it to maybe to make the discussion, but I, like I said, I think more of the big picture that. Yeah, that you just said, well, not giving them anything. Okay. Well, like I said, I just think that, you know, our, our county is strong, our sales tax are record levels. It, it, it's so I, I believe in the regionalism idea that they're talking about. So if they're if other areas are doing well, um, it, it benefits the county. And, I, and we're and the county is strong and great, you know, I think financially. So I, I just think there's well, yeah, they don't they don't seem to have any direct uh, concern. Well, well that's direct that's companies that's here. That's so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know. Yeah. 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 At least know what's going on. Yeah, you know. So here, West Bend is getting a facility. They don't contribute anything, and we're contributing. And we and we got a great place to put a facility. And we still don't get one. So well, I think I'll just leave it at that way. <laughs> so I, I'm thinking we should take it down to zero. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So do we need to vote on that, or is that just a? I think that's. Did we reestablish? We'd, like we'd like to do a whole package. Okay, so there's okay, there's part one. M7 from five to zero, right? That's yeah. part one. Okay. Any, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Did you develop one from M to 15? Huh? Yeah, that could be part of it. Sure. Chief development. Chief yeah. Apprentice. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever yeah. happened to the whiteboard? We didn't do whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, I like the whiteboard. Oh, it was easier to see it all. Oh, we can repaint. <laughs> so we just put the okay. okay. so marker on the wall. Yeah. Are there any Lake Day is happy with their five. Lake Day is happy with their five thousand. Yeah. They did. Yeah. The historic society. They're in at the end of this. Yeah. We gave them ten thousand last year. No, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I'm, I'm picking the wrong thing. Yeah. They didn't. Yep. <coughs> the only three that were requesting additional funding were the Youth Apprenticeship Program, Economic Development, and, and Family Promise that requested a new grant for 15. Oh, yeah. And that's important. That one we really have. To... So, are we going to do 15,000 more for OED? I think we should. We had a lot of bang for our buck with those people. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's just, Kathleen's done a great yeah, job. Uh, Which is pretty much a once, you know. What did Oi do? 15. 15, 15 yeah. What do we do more? 120. 130. 130. But some of that is 6,000 of that is for doesn't go directly to the program. And I believe they pay the rent for part of that as well. 6,000 of that is rent. So. Okay, so then we got youth M7 flag day OED. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to increase OED's rent by 15,000. <laughs> 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 bucks a month. Where do you see that? It's not, it's not on there. They just, just uh, that's exactly. it's on the whiteboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, the historical oh, society was 38 plus 7,500. Was that it? The historical society? And that is another group. Correct. We can't do what oh, they're doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we repeat that 38 plus 7,500. Repeat advocates. 
for 53, six and a quarter. Um, what was the star for again, Marty? I didn't get it written down. Um, 38,000. Yeah, it's in the book here. 54, Rick. I think we cut the railroad consortium to zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can <laughs> <play back to. laughs> we tried that once a few years ago. <laughs> I was we wouldn't give the youth uh, for premise people anything in it. <laughs> that was. Yeah, yeah, well, you guys are really putting me in a tough spot there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't show up, and we knew nothing about yeah, that. Yeah, I know. I made sure they uh, they came. <laughs> that was a little something. Um, family promise. They wanted fifteen. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's new, right? That would be new. Yeah. I think this is the year of. Invest in Amozaki County. Yeah. yeah. And so they, they had approached me and I, I said I would support a request of $15,000. For, for Champ, 15, yeah. Okay. Given that, you know, we're, we are, although we will eventually hand over the keys to that, that facility, we are partnered with them pretty yeah. significantly, at, this, yeah. at least for the next. Seven years. Right. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty important. Okay. Yeah, historical, we're all okay with 38. Plus the seven times. Well, 38 for operations, 7,500 for capital. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, everyone else is good. For tourism, yeah. so we're back. It's good, right? Another I don't know, something about tourism. If we're getting our bang for our buck for that, too. Are we or we? Well, did you see the email that came out at all, by any chance, about yeah. leaving us out of the article and everything else? Yeah. yeah. I think they realized they made a big mistake there. They did a follow up. I mean, but you, you've got to be aware of that when you're giving money. And right. it just, we are there. We're the biggest supporter, right? We are the supporter they have, correct? Right. Maybe we shouldn't be. Yeah. Jason, what's your recommend about that one? Well, I, I guess I would say a couple of things. Um, we've talked a lot about marketing in the county. Um, you know, I think if we're going to move in that direction, this this could probably be part of that. You know, there's probably an aspect of timing in terms of um, what we have. We have a contract at the fairgrounds too to do marketing, and I, you know, Mary Sheffield does great work. I don't think she plans to do it for the next decade. Right. So you know, I think there's there's a bit of timing there. I think, we, but we also have an opportunity with the. Uh, <coughs> Recovery Act dollars to, to accomplish some things too. But. So is that yes or no? <laughs> um, well, you know, I would say this: we had historically contributed twenty thousand dollars, and we we increased them to ten. We increased them ten so that they could do a Discover Wisconsin video. <coughs> that's, that's, uh, a number of years ago. So the. Historically, it was twenty. Well, let's go back. To so if we go back to twenty, and you are Andrew okay. did get that grant that they're getting now. I think they're working on it for next year. Maybe. Right, that yeah. would be like ten thousand. Yeah, and I, I, you know, on a, if there was a match or something that was needed for that, I'm sure we could scratch it up on the county side of the ledger for sure. So we, Rick, we talked to Discover Wisconsin. Yep. And I, I talked to him for over an hour. Yep. Yeah. Because well, the county's association has a big push right now. Um, 
to do, they're looking for 20 counties to sign up to, let's do a statewide marketing campaign. Yeah. I think that's where we put our money. Where? In our own video from Mozaukee County, which airs on TV, which is backed by the Wisconsin Counties Association. I, when I was at the convention, Rick and I, the actually young man that's heading up the, the district, you know, the outreach has ties to people around here. Yep. He's got relatives in, in Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, you know. So, and he was fired up about, you know, let's get something going in Ozaki County because it's been a long time since we did that. I mean, I, I, mean, I, you know, I do, I guess I, I somewhat question the value of printing a pamphlet, a book, a very nice book, but, you know, we have a very, when, I, when I'm looking for things to do somewhere, I ask Mr. Google. Yeah, I go on my phone. So. I don't go to the pay phones and <laughs> at the travel <laughs> plaza and pick up pamphlets. <laughs> What's that? $30,000 for that booklet they give? No, that's yeah, it's funded by the ads in the booklet. So what do they want the $30,000? So they use the $30,000 to do additional advertising, advertising in like uh, the Chicago Tribune or whatever they were talking about. And did they come forward with what they've done? You know? I mean, then they just asked, she just asked for it. She didn't really say that, oh, this is what we're putting. Like, is that advertising? Well, I asked specifically, so for this book, how is this funded? And she said through their ads. Yep. Cool. Is that last year, too? Right. Oh. Yeah, they had a problem with it last year because who the hell picks up a book? They give us, they give us a budget. No, no, the, the, you knew that was good. A big part of like their budget is uh, half of the budget, but thirty thousand of their fifty thousand dollar total income comes from us. Two thirds, you know, sixty percent. Well, we we're not budgeting this year though to a marketing position at the county level. I mean, we had talked about that. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We can use we can we use, can uh, use the... ARPA money for that. So I think that'll be the time we talk about that. Um, just so you know, like I said, in here they've got twenty three thousand that they they have budget for advertising, and then the other big expense is seventeen five for office staff. So that's for forty thousand or fifty thousand dollars. So if we cut them back, they'd probably cut back the advertising from twenty three thousand down to twenty thirteen thousand. That will up. Well, you want to take it back to twenty? That's a ten thousand dollar haircut. They wanted an extra ten. No, they didn't want extra. Yeah, they just wanted the same thirty that they got here. Right, but they came to us for an extra ten thousand to make a video. And then we continued on with that 35. Back then, I right. guess that was only four years ago. That was a while ago already when Andrew struck. I remember watching it. And I think I remember that was a long time. I have some upstairs if you want them. Oh, okay. really? I have a couple cases upstairs. Oh. Do you have any monopoly? They're on DVD, so you'll have to find a DVD. You can play on Zopoli, Bob. Yeah, while you're watching the video. <laughs> I don't know. We have quite a, we have quite a few left. <laughs> so what do you think? Do we leave them, them at 30? Do we cut them 10 to give them a haircut? What do you want? 20. Go to 20. My right. I can buy a bigger, you'll have to buy a bigger. I, you know, I'd like to see giving them 30 maybe and saying, let them know that it could get cut next year, you know. Um, Give them 30, send them an email with the disappointment of how we are left out of the yeah. thing. And this is probably cut with 25. Give them a little warning shot over the bow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm going to set 25. Uh, better than zero. 
You can get their attention more than just an email. 25. 25. Okay. What's the five it is? <laughs> this is your first cut. So you took five extra groups. I'm just going to list the change. Saying yes, family promise, right? Well, the zero, right? Yep. Zero. You are gonna be surprised. Should have went to the winery and looked at your thing. <laughs> We've got the Milwaukee Seven Cedarburg Cultural Center. Is that two separate ones? I don't know why. It's, that's just an old line item. We that's to, gotta be old. We used to give we used to give support to the Cedarburg Cultural Center. It's just the way it pulls out of our accounting system. Okay. They so, must have. When Milwaukee 7 came in, it looked like probably they just take down Milwaukee 7 on an old budget line item. Then you see, go to the cultural center. Nick Dan's okay. And down on uh, advocates that went to 54 was your recommendation, Jason? Uh, 53, yeah, 54 rounded up. That's that's what we amended it to last year. So they're, they're status quo. So, but it's 54 now, what's showing it, right? Yeah. Okay. Not the 53,625 or whatever. Uh, 53, yeah, I was wrong. It's 53,625. Okay, yeah. Sewer pack, we'll leave it just the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a request. You can floor it. You can. You can. They seem to be pretty fiscally responsible with what they could charge. I guess. Yeah. OED at 15,000, yeah, there is other debts. OED at 15,000, you're going to request, right? Well, that's it then. So, okay. can I ask a good question now? This was the process here. So, basically, when we're adding this money, we're just going to, we're talking about adding to the proposed budget and we would adjust the sales tax. That would be my recommendation. Or you can increase the levy. Yeah. For right now, assuming we would not want to increase the levy, we'd probably do the sales tax. Okay. So, yeah. there were no other places in the budget during the course of the day that we found that we had any other savings. Is there? Yeah, I mean, I think we squeeze, you know, I mean, you could do things like reduce the sheriff's budget by 100000 and say, Rely on the general fund to pick up your shortfall. You know. But for now, I guess we don't really. The IRS. Our recommendation would be to balance it off with an increased assumption of sales tax. Okay. So then, assuming so we got a lot of other things in here that we're talking about, right? So, what was this? We talked about the sales tax. We could increase the assumption. If we went to the town association, what was that number? Yeah, I'm sure it's in here, but it's uh, three. 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 so say 387,000 would take you up to the Wisconsin Counties Association recommendation. All right, so for sake of conversation, if we we could find some some money there, or we could just go yeah. into it or go you know, part of it or something. You recommend to us what you would like to do, and we will find a way to accomplish it for you. Well, finance people <laughs> told us that they didn't really want to go up to that amount, right? They want to be, you know, conservative. Okay. This is kind of throwing it all out there. It's really aggressive. So, Chad, this paper you handed out, what is the total of all these projects? Uh, Total for the expansion request. Yeah, I was so hoping it was three hundred and seventy thousand in levy. What's that? It should be around five hundred thousand in levy. <laughs> well, it has to be like three seventy now. No, I mean, okay, <laughs> the actual number here. Thank uh -huh. 
which all the human service stuff was up. But you know, just a question on that. You said it doesn't impact living, but some of these have like only partially rev partial revenue offsets. Yeah, but it, really that's, just that's just the way they're well. originally presented. But in further discussions yeah, yeah. with human service staff, there's there's a levy to support those. those all of them. Okay. Liza does a very good job of this. She will make sure. Yeah, no, that 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 sounds good. I just like I said, just you know, we didn't have it completely covered according to what the human service. Well, can I just uh, start by saying that I think that um, to me, you know, there's arguments, obviously great arguments for all of this stuff, but to me, the uh, sheriff's um, request about the two dispatcher positions, I, I, that seems to be high on my list as far as importance. Oh, yeah. Especially now that they're doing back. That's why I'm saying it, because I think that could be like well, the ranks number one or high. Yeah, I disagree. Okay, <clears throat> no, that's good. That's good. Good debate. Let me know why. Your time here is wrong as it may be. Should we start at the top and work down, or what? How do you want to? Which direction do you want? We can start at the top and go down. Okay. So, so based on the exchange we had there, instead of thirty-three thousand, I heard fourteen five plus ten nine. For the two positions in, in, in each totaling 25 4. And it seems like everybody else has said yes. I kind of feel the peer pressure here. <laughs> so well, well, say yes. Let me talk about that one. I, I don't I don't think we should do anything for that. I, okay. I think I, I mean marketing marketing and no, no, we're talking about extra extension to me. Yeah. I would not I would put that way down on the bottom of our of our priority. What's that? And my so what I yeah. what I communicate to her is that I think the agricultural piece is important, but the the marketing piece I, I I said you know I think we're going to look at marketing sort of countywide, so I wasn't completely sold on that. That was my okay. well, that was my analysis. I would agree with that. I would agree with that too. So that's ten nine, right? Make it 11. Make it 11. Okay, so $11,000. So yeah. not 33, we're looking at 11. I can begrudgingly accept that. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then, so then the 33 net goes to 11. Goes to 11? Yeah. If we only say yes to the eight, except the zero, okay. That's the market. Where's 22? Where's my Okay. Okay. Minus 22. Yeah. So, so we got 11 tentatively. So that was. The supervisor Melatex mm -hmm. issue there, where I get to push back now. Do I get to push back? Sure, go ahead. Okay, just so, push it. So, so the analysis, the last paragraph there is, indicates the sheriff's needs 19.07 dispatchers and they have 18. So they, by analysis, need 1.07 dispatchers and they're asking for two. Now, I have no problem, and absolutely, we should do one, but why do we need to do two? Get a 0.07. Yeah, but right now they're making up the 1.07 with their current staff yeah, paying over time, right? Overtime. Right, overtime. with overtime. And yeah. all you need is one of those guys to walk out, and now you're short. And you don't yeah. get somebody in that position overnight. You're, you're, I would you're rather have business, business, find one, one or two extra cheaper than hiring another body. Yeah, to you're do a point. Inter, or you're paying for. Uh, yeah, so we're vacations and yeah, paying exactly. for insurance, you know. So by paying overtime, it's actually except if except if those guys don't do the job, because they're overworked and overstressed. Yeah, and I can see that being the case now. But but a point oh seven that should be absorbable. You know, once you get to maybe a half half a position, you, you're you're stretching everybody, and they're obviously stretching everybody now to make up a whole position with with what they have, right? They're, they're fulfilling 19 positions with 18 people. That was before they just added another city. And that's temporary. So that's temporary. So six months. I was going to have to do So, so we, that one I think of, we should do one. We, well, we can't. We're going to have to cut money somewhere out of this. And it doesn't make sense to me to have an extra dispatcher here when, when he's operating now with, with zero extra. And we give him one, he's up to where he needs to be. Very good. I, I brought it up. I'm kind of torn now. Like it makes sense what you're saying. Let me let me ask this though. 
to clarify, Jason. So I, I didn't. Kid, did he say that that the Mequon thing is uh yeah, is, is, will that put him to eight to nineteen point zero seven, or will he need more because it's the Mequon? This analysis was done before the Mequon. Yeah. So he's but still. But he said that really wasn't affecting. So are, we, are they or are they not right. dispatching third shift for Beansville right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, they are. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. They don't really. They can yeah. absorb it. Right. Um, so they have third. Yeah. Yeah. But what they what they had it was next one, which okay. they had. So, but it's third uh, shift person. Jason, you're saying he asked for this right. before that one? No, as if there's if there what they have that third shift person. The next one. The next one. That person should be able to handle that. So he wanted two before. He knew about I mean, it's not like they're just taking calls for if it was a first shift or second shift position you're looking at different phone call volume than you are at third shift now let me tell you what happened two years ago they got two dispatchers fully trained all through the course after everybody was clean they could start working one dispatcher came in and talked to the sheriff. And he said, just so you know, I don't want to work weekends, but I don't want to work nights. Okay, no, well, we can't. Okay. So he left because the sheriff says, no, this is a 24-7 operation. Okay. We, can't, we can't make a, a budget decision on the possibility that somebody is going to quit. I mean, that's just... That would be foolish for us to carry an extra. I tell you right now, somebody's going to quit. 132 quit. But, well, but, but you can't have extra employees. But that's a position you can't just train somebody overnight. Well, it takes a lot of training. You, you, you've got six I was a dispatcher. I know it's not something easy to train. But what? Does she need work? Yeah, she can come she can down. Work. <laughs> oh, Nobody can call her up about that. She can work 10% of the job. We only need her for third shift. Oh, <laughs> you only need her for third shift. She had a look at a murder. <laughs> okay, let me, I want to ask Jason this. So you talked about uh, the sheriff's budget. Now, if we came to him and said, oh, we're only going to do one, we're going to go 63000 on this. Can he find sixty-three thousand somewhere else in his budget, or how would that? He may be able to. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, we could have, we could see him jump. We could see if he could join us again on Zoom, if you like. Yeah. I think that'd be a great idea because the sheriff. I work with two different sheriffs as sheriff, and he's really tries to accommodate the county. He doesn't go out of his way to accommodate. He doesn't shove the budget down your throat and say this is. Not saying that more he did all the time, but I'm just saying, you know, sheriff goes above and beyond to work with. No, it's great. Oh, great. Okay, buddy, you're great. gonna talk. I'm just gonna <laughs> show. <laughs> oh, you don't want to get in trouble with the sheriff now? Yeah. You want to get pulled over? Tell me, come on, oh, you're right. It's all on you, Marty. I'm on their side. Right? Marty, you know, I can do that with it. I say we all leave and no, we'll watch Marty. Because <laughs> now we got the second question anyway with the SRO thing. Forget, you know, the, 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 the. Do they do have part-time positions? Yeah, I don't think they have. Do they have any part-time dispatchers? No, I do think they have any part-time dispatchers. Yeah, right. And I'll tell you, if Mequon can't get enough people, there's going to be another department that's going to yeah. ask for the same thing. I believe that's going to happen. And I, they have been I can extremely busy with all of well, and I could see oh, like in the future, oh, yeah. like one, four, oh, 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 more, more people to. jumping in. Too. I said, I guess we got to cross that road when we get to it. We can't say, well. Well, then if we wait, then are we going to have to do Let's that halfway through the year and say, okay, now we've got to add a position? I don't think so, but nothing's changing. If it's something you can train immediately for or just hire somebody, you know, but you can't do that. Take them on. Right, yeah. My wife worked a lot of overtime. Mr. Chairman. We couldn't get that done. But, do we, some, you know, these, usually sense. if you're in a position like that, you have a real good, strong feeling that you have to work the overtime to cover the shifts for the community. 
you know, I mean, you, you have a, there's a lot of you know, We only need 1.07 air controllers extra, okay. but if it's your flight that's affected by the 07, <laughs> or it's your house when you that, call. That's not, you don't get that's not right, because that's the 07 being covered. Yeah. What if we do 1.5 and Sheriff comes up with the other 0.5? We give him the money, but he's got to find the money for the... How about we have agreement on one, right? Nobody yeah. Oh, yeah. No. How about if we? How about if we? Well, you know, put the placeholder. Exactly. So how about if we put a placeholder for one, so we can move through this and see how much money we're going to have at the end. So if we so we, we got eleven in the one first one. Let's placehold sixty-two eight seventy here and move on to the next thing and just keep adding it up. There you go. There there is. 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 There so, Sheriff, I'm pushing back on the two dispatchers, dispatchers, because... Why, why would you do that? Well, <laughs> because I want to keep you on your toes and I love you. Uh, Copy. So, so um, the analysis needing 19.07 dispatchers, having 18, there's no question you need one, but then you've got another dispatcher to cover a 0.07 analysis right now you're doing an incredible job apparently of covering a gap of 1.07 positions with overtime and current staffing so we definitely want to relieve that situation but from a business standpoint and that you know is my background for good or for bad um, it just doesn't make sense to get another position with a 0.07 need the other piece i'm not sure if it's in our analysis is that my dispatchers, we allow them to work an extra one of their off days, I think four shifts a year. When they have a short paycheck, they're allowed to work uh, straight time uh, one of their off days. So that helps fill some of our vacancies as well. But that's starting to burn them out. As, and I think that's another thing you have to look at is staff burnout. Uh, sure. They're working a lot. Am I still there? Yeah, here we're listening. So um, that's what I took in the, I mean, it doesn't come out in that analysis, right? The 0 0.07 and um, perfect world. That's what I want, but I understand that um, I can make do with one. I get that. Um, I, I put in for two as that's what I, I'd hope to get to be able to fill those gaps and relieve some of the pressure. Because so many times in law enforcement, all my divisions, we hire exactly what we need and I don't have any extra in case someone's sick out um, with, you know, with FMLA, all those other pieces um, tend to put a strain on our, um, on our personnel. Sheriff, didn't you just mention to me two days ago that you're going to be acquiring more dispatching down in that one? Or is that just temporary or do you think that could be more? That is uh, only temporary. Um, because of their uh, shortage that they have, they're unable to fill their third shift. So they requested that I take over dispatching for them. So that's Good. only going to be a, a temporary, um, we estimate maybe six months. And we'll reassess as, as they are able to fill their positions. Sure. If you needed that as a full time, all of a sudden they said they want you to do it full time then that 19.07 becomes what? I don't know. And we'd have to assess what their call volume is and to see if we had any extra time available for our current dispatchers. So we'd have to see exactly what we'd have to bring in in order to uh, assume somebody else. But uh, that hasn't been uh, part of our discussion at this point. And uh, when it comes up, if it does come up, I'll, I'll be sure to have discussions with the county board. I think when we added Grafton, we added three, and that was a very conservative estimate, correct? Correct. That was, uh, that was really tight to try to do it the most economical. Any other questions for the 
sure. Well, well I do on the next site. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. On your call time, you're talking about for Mequon. Do you have any uh, understanding from them what their how many calls they receive on their third shift as opposed to let's say second shift or you know I mean is it is it reduced calls on third shift? Yes. Yep. Uh, the same as my my staffing. Um, it uh, I have four on on day shift, which is eight a.m. until four p.m. I have four on second shift, which is 4 p.m. to midnight. And then midnight to 8 a.m., I have three. And they have one. I guess what I, I, I'm thinking is, uh, you know, is there reduced demand for, you know, can, can the three people handle the extra calls from Metlon without being overloaded? Uh, well, um, that's that's going to be the, our, our challenge. It's uh, I don't have much choice if Mequon's unable to be able to dispatch for themselves that I have to take on that responsibility. So the um, my I have some uh, operational plans I'm going to put it in place. But I do believe with our staffing and then some reduction of work by some of the officers that it should be a doable um, piece, at least for the short term. Well, we certainly don't want to leave you shorthanded. Uh, right. <clears throat> right. Yeah, right. so a different piece. So, um, Sheriff, on the school resource officer, we haven't got to that discussion yet, but since we've got you and not to have to get you again, um, I was going to recommend that we fund that at 70%, um, indicating to the schools that they do need to participate in this to make it happen. Right. Um, after we got done with our previous Zoom, I had discussions with my staff and uh, I had forgot about this piece that the the board, the uh, school boards, they meet and they set their budget in December, but that is for the next year. That's not for uh, January of 2022. That's for their school year, which I believe starts in September of 2022. So even if they were able to fund 30%, we wouldn't really realize that until 2023. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. So then that, that again, wouldn't be available until like next summer to start that position. Right. Whenever they're they're, they're they set their next budget because they're already into this school year budget. Sure. Well, this, I mean, that, that is the goal, right? To have a partnership. I think uh, Supervisor Nelson mentioned that Port Washington has a 50-50 split with the police department for their school officer and the school district. Um, our, that would be the goal, right? Is a, is a shared cost? Yes, yep. That, that's what we're working towards. Um, and it depends on what their board is. I think they can't speak for their board until their board votes. Yeah. And, and right so that's, now that's sort of up in the air right now. And right now you're fulfilling that need kind of part-time with staff doing yeah. multiple jobs? Well, my one of my full-time that is in the court services, he is, I backfill him with some of my part-time um, deputies, and then he's able to free up his time to go visit the schools. And the downside of that is? It's staff, and I'm pulling him away from his other duties up in the courts. Uh -huh. And I have, uh, I don't have as many part timers as I used to be able to have. So I have reduced staffing in there. I'm juggling that as well. The, uh, you know, I wanted to ask too that the $122,000. Is that just salary and benefits for a year? It seems to be there's yes. something else in there. That's just that. Yes. Okay. All right. 
Any other questions for the sheriff? Sorry about the bother, sheriff, but uh, no worries. I had a nice uh, a nice ramp to pull over on. I'm glad you're not driving. Well, I wouldn't drive in Zoom. That wouldn't be uh, appropriate for anyone. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Right. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you as well. Thank you. I just received an email that said I should get on the on the on the committee meeting. So I'll I'll stay or I'll go or answer answer questions as requested. Is that your whole office in the background? Wherever your background is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, have a corporate 
game or something. Nice spiral staircase. Uh, Iowa State Law Library. Okay. Uh, thoughts on everybody with the with this, the eighty-five and the forty-five. Eight thousand five hundred and forty-five thousand. Right. Eighty-five and forty-five. Eighty-five hundred. Oh, sorry, I didn't do that. Still eighty-five and forty-five. Are we okay with that? I am. Jason, you have any? Thanks, Adam. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. Did you say Ohio State Law? Iowa. Iowa State. Iowa State. Oh, yeah. So I just uh, asked the question. We're at 190 right now. That, that's that really the stuff. Okay. That did include the. Uh, Oh, uh, charity. It didn't include that. Hang on. I'm rounding up. He's rounding up on his whiteboard. Okay. Put it up in a second. So just to, so we've got Andy here, his stuff, right? And then we've got the sixty thousand um, one. That was sixty thousand. That was for the fairgrounds. Like, I'm just kind of weighing what else we have left. Yeah. Well, there's some. There's a uh, full time, part time to full time at Wapadonia, right? For twenty five. That one we've already actually hired. So we've already hired. So is that the budget. <laughs> so no. it's not the budget. The recommendation of the county board chairman. That was the recommendation of the county board chairman. We're going to build as fast as possible. The doors open. Leave the locker seat or store. So is it in the budget already? Or is it internal government? A chairman said. A So that that's in the budget already? It is not in the budget, but the position was. Advertised that that uh, will be filled. And how much was it? Twenty five thousand. It's it's on one of the latter pages. Okay. So we so we're at a quarter mill right now, basically. Right a quarter. Land and water. Correct. That's including the land and water. No. No. Yeah, no, those are really the the last three you have. I don't know. Payments. Instead of payments, would be 
the most. And that's why I asked him. We did this tracker. I thought maybe that's good. And then maybe in the future we could do that more. No, I have to interject. I have one other item. Oh. No, I do. And it, and it just recently came up, and it's really uh, at the county level. We have a stormwater permit that the county has, and it's it's to allow the county to discharge the highway department to discharge their ditch water into and through urbanized areas. And in March of 2022, we have to, to be in compliance with the state permit. We have to identify in the urbanized areas if we're meeting the TMDL requirements, and if we're not, how do we reach those requirements? And that's something that just kind of came up. I, I have monies in this year's budget. I have $10,000 and I'm at the point where I'm starting to get prices. And that there's more work there than I realized. And of course, then it's more money too. So for this year, I have 10,000. I was going to be asking for 15 additional thousand for next year's budget. That was not included in the list. So that's next something that next year meeting 22 or 23 uh, 22 and tom over several years ago that this was something that he had asked our department to take care of was the, the stormwater permitting was somebody else soon prepared to that Abby? no so it was a new thing it was a new permitting item that came up roughly about six years ago okay. so the health specialist would be responsible for Working on that? No, not specifically. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. That would be something I would take care of. Yeah. It's totally different. It's not on the list, but I, yeah. I have to bring it out. Yeah, no, but you would have had it on if you would have. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so how much did you get to do that? Uh, 15. 15, 15 additional thousand. I have 5,000 in the budget already for it. And then. That sounds so, like a mandate to say what I have us do with the money. I'm sorry, Andy. Well, then we had the, the office reorganization on there too. Yeah, the conservation planner position that would be. Maybe we should work this backwards. We know all these requests. <laughs> how much money do we pay? Five. Well, did you include it in there, though, the, the 160000 for the court of court fees for that? No. You did that. That was 500 without that. Oh, that was 500 without the clerk of court. So right. basically, we just trimmed it. 121 from 500, correct? Well, Actually, a little that's more than that. We trimmed it 144 or something. It's just the amount of those yeah. So, not, not well, we added it to the aren't, aren't those a wash with the. Well, no, I think they're still 5,000. Well, 5,000. Because we took. Uh, you have left. Huh? We also <coughs> if you go up to the county's association yeah. number, that's yeah. a good yeah. So what's left in the hundred and two? So Jason, can I bring up another point, can I ask this? So there was some talk before when about this uh the study for the for the employee study, right? So and then we said, well, we don't need to include that in. We're going to wait for the for the study to tell us what it's going to be. It's in the budget. That's in the budget. The money, that money is in the that budget. Is in the budget. I mean, for the study. I'm, I'm not talking about the actual for the study, but I'm saying once oh. the study is done, there is some talk um, that, but well, we've got to wait for that to know the, for that position or something. If we're so upgrading. We, if we're upgrading. Oh, right. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm thinking, is that any way that we can save money in the current budget from that that we we already had in there. Is that a negative we could put up there somehow? 
are there, you're saying, are there upgrades assumed in the budget that we could say hold off for the study? Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Do, and do we yeah. have, I don't think we have, there was some in, in um, Health and Human Services. Yeah, those are levies, are not levy supported. Uh, there were some in facilities we asked them to hold off. We asked Human Services to hold off. Uh, yeah. There are others. There's really no levy, there's really no levy in those. All right, well, I just thought I'd take a shot at it. I swear you told me three days ago this is an easy budget. This is an easy budget. <laughs> you can stop right now and be done. <laughs> right? Easy, easy. All right, we got, we got so going back to my other question when I said we're working backwards. Yep. What money do we have available right now from what we've already allocated to what's left in that? Right there. The 136 is what we but have left. If you want more, we'll... What's left is what's left if we max out our sales tax. Right. And finance would like us to stay below that, max out, but that's what's left if we max out the sales tax. So what you're saying is we could go we could go to the general fund or what to, to cover whatever we went over? Oh, I mean, no. Well, here here can I have another question that I thought. Okay. So we sold some property in finance and we took we made an extra hundred and ten thousand dollars and we just took that and put in couldn't we use that for like say the treasury budget budget or something here to use some of that money? Or is that too uh creative? <laughs> finance. What if what let me maybe I need what's the committee's goal? Do everything that's left? Well, I don't know. I mean that that's yeah. right. We've got two positions left, right? The the land and water conservation planner and the fairgrounds position, you know, totaling about 130. And then we've got the, the clean farm families and the reorganization clerical the technical. Well it's fifteen thousand, I think is I would oh, yeah, it's fifteen and before 15. the twenty-five. Right. right. So I, I just look at this, we can't I don't think we can do it all. So um well, I yes we could. If you'd like to do it all, we'll have, we'll we'll set you up to do it all. Uh, is it going to affect our reduction in the tax levy and um, the people paying? Because I think he's got that in there. Do you have the Do you have the board board position raised in there? It should be. No, I'm not in there either. All right, that's got to get in there. <laughs> so that UW extension eleven thousand up there is that that was a thirty three thousand is that right? That is yeah, right. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, well, it's kind of already figured in, I think. Andy, how much of this position would impact the clean farm families? 5% of this position, 10, 3%? I would say probably 25%. 25%. Okay. But I was going to recommend we take that 25 request for clean farm families down to like 15 or and or something. I, I I do agree if they have some money available there, but you don't have any at this point. Yeah. But I think you know 10, 10, 15, something like that. I think we should take that down. We'll add it is in our strategic plan, that task. That specifically is outlined in our strategic plan. Just want to add that for the benefit of the farm families is, is part of one of our strategic Yes. And obviously, we're very taken and supportive of that with the tractor purchase we made. Mm -hmm. And if this new position would, would be 25% in support of that effort, and we put $10,000 into the kitty to, to do stuff with, I think that's a, I think we're putting our money where our mouth is. And then we can keep that every year for 10000 down the road. Yeah. 10K? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we make that 2510. And there's there's the other fifteen, I guess, for the uh, land and water or the stormwater, right? Stormwater permit. That should, that should be in the budget somewhere, right? That's uh, yeah. it's up there. I, I, have, uh, I have monies already in the budget, five thousand for next year. I have ten in it for this year, five for next year, 
I lowered the 10, you know, when we get our budget, I lowered the 10 to a 5, thinking it wasn't going to be quite so much work. But as I'm getting into it now, I'm finding it's more work and more money than what I had anticipated. And it has to be done every five years, uh, five years, 10 years? Right now, the way the permit is written, by March of 2022, we have to be at this next step, which is to determine where we're at as a county to meet the standard. So you budgeted five, but you need to budget 20? I need to budget another 15 to get to 20. Yeah. I kind of think it's my own department, and it, and it makes sense. You know, the fairgrounds is aging. It's getting to that point where with the amount of hours we're shifting over there, we should have somebody over there, but to me, that if we're going to whack something, it's that fairgrounds full time thing. We just have to make do with. We've been making do for the whole the, 10 years. No, I know. I know. I'm just trying to accomplish everything in here, and we're only worried about $32,000. Have we got that right? Really? Out of a $92 million budget, we're starting to separate the fly specs of the pepper here. <laughs> Warren stuff. Warren stuff. Seriously, we're sitting here for thirty-two thousand dollars on a ninety million dollar budget. Seventy-four. Because they're not paying us overtime, or it'll all be. I don't know what it is. So you're saying land and water? Land and water. The county board salary. Seventy-eight with flight on everything. You got seventy-four up there, I think. I put eight thousand. Well, you put eight. Okay, then I'm on the one below it. I'm sorry. Yep, I'm not watching. Good. All right. I think we have to. Well, we can make it thirty-eight. Yeah. And take it down to even thirty at the moment. I'm willing to give up my own. Yeah. 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 kill me, but you know. Their drum is kind of. I'll give some cookies. How much is my working? Oh, now we're talking about the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I just can I just say that as we're getting to the end of this, you're talking about you know, doing all this, but you know the end result here is the front. The only thing we're cutting out is the SRO position. That's if we do that, all that. But. Um, yeah, well, really uh, yeah okay. I mean, we're not doing that egg okay, position and for the everything that you have here, right? Yeah. 15 and then the 10 for the two yeah. All right. What about the 78300? Yeah, that's in there. That's in there. That's already in there. So that's already in there. Everything is up there. Everything is in there. The fairgrounds is in there. Everything is in there. We just talked about it, right? So we so only need thirty-one thousand, and then ten thousand for clean bottom. You can make that in a big sale. Then you have the new yeah. position and the new position, yeah. and also the reorganization. Oh yeah, that, that would be you fine. Have you, have you only change the ten thousand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the we're good there. Yeah. 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 Right. What do you think? Tell me. What was what was the last? Kick here at the can. Well, it sounds he like we the the uh, job out at the fairgrounds. Oh, no, we, we, we've yeah. got it in there. Oh, it's in there. It in. So Andy Andy takes a haircut on the twenty five for clean farm families down to ten, and we take that fifteen thousand and put it towards permit, and he gets everything he wants. What's the storm water? And our, what is it? 121? One. I'll just put storm water. 151. 151. That's what I'm sure. talking about. And I think I heard Chairman Schlingbolt was going to organize a bake sale. That's right. Make right. up that 31. Make that 31. We'll find it somewhere. I think we can find it. We'll sell. Well, so, Jason, what are we doing? What do you mean? Find it somewhere. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> we have some we have some balancing accounts that we use in in the budget, and I think we can probably make some adjustments. Yeah, we we'll did last year. We have half of the first sales, sales tax up. We could take the sales tax up to four hundred thousand, and oh, we yeah, we could put this thirty two thousand on the sales tax too. I mean, you're not. So the three jars going to be empty. 
our cookie jars are full. We're, yeah. We, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would probably say just make the increase of sales tax 418,000 and let's be. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I just to say that the, the SRO thing, I think you know, we can't call you for next year, but I'd really like to push to, to remember this and that yeah. that's that stuff yeah. that we put that yeah. in next year. Yeah. We'll yeah. Care yeah. Those that so sure. yeah, that we're going to do it next year. You know, that we're Make sure he remembers. Well, Don't and, worry. and please emphasize I that I know. he needs to. He needs to put the you know work with the schools and get them to pony up. They they need to. Since, since that's the way it's going to have to go, they're going to have to make the first move and budget for this before we budget for it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. No, that's not the way it works. If we have a problem, we have to send somebody regardless. Well, we're sending somebody. And, they're, and for free. They're not paying anything for it. Is it? But the schools aren't paying for it. We were doing it for many years for uh, Ross and Hawkville. Hawkville contributes nothing. So, yeah, that was nice. That's just the way it is. All right. But when you have, a, when you have an incident, you got to send somebody anyway. You, what you're hoping to do with the school resource officer is avoid the incident and get them used to seeing officers. It's a very important. I, I, the, the guy I grabbed, I see him. He's great. We had, we had a fellow for a long time. He was very good, this new younger guy. So, yeah. yeah. I, have part, I have yeah. 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 Very well liked by the kids. The staff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The board goes bananas and they want this school thing in there. They can bring it up and take it on the general fund. Right. So, Mr. Chairman, I move that we. Hold on one second. <laughs> um, we have two action items. We have one to decide the budget expansion request, and then one to do the adoption with the, with the recommendation. Okay. First, we are approving the. The expansion request list. Correct. Let me just say this. Right. <clears throat> right, I'll send it up to the. Are we on the same page? Do you see that? Okay. On the same page, not pretty much. Oh, no are you? Okay. Pretty much is okay. It's okay, but not all. <laughs> Good. It. All right. I'll put the chart in, in the minutes. Yeah. And you're going to, um, that's the expansion request is a separate item, anyways, for them to approve uh, in November. <laughs> we need a, we're going to do the expansion request first, and then we'll do the budget. We don't list this, it'll be listed on there. Someone should make a motion to say we approve the expansion request. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. The expansion request. Yeah, that's an expansion. All right, just want to make sure before we get going. Okay. Do we have a motion from the floor, Marty? We uh, adopt the expansion request as uh, outlined. Second. Second. Second by Jeracy. Can I ask our finance Go ahead. Really, really unhappy or sad that we aren't staying with the sales tax projections for the town association or the W. I want to make sure we appreciate their, their input. Generally, the county's association is pretty good at their estimates, obviously. I feel there's a sales you can ask whether, I mean, could something, something happen to the economic system in the United States in the next 12 months? 
Executive Committee's 2022 proposed budget recommendation to the County Board. Second. Nelson, second by Geraci. Any discussion? What are we going to the budget?